You want to make pizza night with the family even better? Bam! Get yourself the new Parmesan Crusted Papadilla. It's like a golden crispy little fireworks show in your mouth. Get a new Parmesan Crusted Papadilla for only seven bucks. Papa John's. At Paladin Stadium in Greenville, South Carolina, we get set for a battle between the Furman Paladins and number 25 North Carolina A&T Aggies. We get things rolling in the fall of 2021 on our Ingalls SoCon Game of the Week. Hi, friends, with Jared Singleton, Pete Gannity with you. A first ever meeting for Furman in North Carolina A&T. And Jared, you and I did some games back in the spring, but here in the fall with college football getting back to normal, schools on the FCS level happy to have now some depth on their rosters. Absolutely, Pete. I mean, having depth on the roster uh, allows, you know, really mitigates a lot of stress for coaches because they can rotate a lot of guys in and out of the game and keep a high uh, standard of play. I tell you what, it's going to be critical because it's a pretty hot, warm day, and being on that turf field, Pete, you're going to want to have a lot of guys rotating in and out of the game. Let's talk about a couple of the key players in the ball game, both running backs, among the best in the nation on this level. Jermaine Martin, two years ago, the last time North Carolina A&T played games, he topped all of FCS with nearly eight yards per carry. Well, I'll tell you what, Mr. Martin is a big, powerful back. I mean, being 5'10", 225, he not only has the vision and the power to run in between the tackles, but he has that top-end speed to really, once he gets to that second and third level, can take it to the house. Uh, it's going to be really hard for Furman to try to contain that. That. Flipping that to Furman's side of the field, um, they've got some pretty good backs themselves, and it, that's really led by Devin Wynn. I mean, all season long, even back in the spring, he's always been the guy that was the go-to guy in the backfield. So it's going to be a, 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 a big battle for both of these teams to try to mitigate these uh, backs from having a big day, and so I'm looking forward to it today, Pete. Furman looks to hold up the honor of the Southern Conference. North Carolina A&T playing its first game as a member of the Big South and their first game in nearly 625 days. We come back and kick it off here in Greenville when we return on our Ingalls SOCON Game of the Week. That word seems more important these days as it's consumed all aspects of our lives and made our universes feel smaller than ever. But at Bon Secours, your health has always been our top priority, and we're staying as committed as always to personalizing the right care for you. Because whether here or from home, we believe your health care should always revolve around you. Bon Secours, primary care for the universe of you. Visit bonsecours.com slash primary care to connect with the provider today. X vehicles available no matter what adventure lies around the corner. There's an X for that. Join BMW's Accelerate into Autumn and receive a $1,000 credit. Make your summer last during the Ford Labor Day sales event. Now is still a great time to buy a Ford. Choose from our F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 44 years. And from the freshest lineup of SUVs in America. It's the Ford Labor Day sales event. Drive one, buy one today. Just announced. Now get 0% financing for 72 months on the 2021 Ford F-150. Learn more at buyfordnow.com and see your Carolina Ford dealer today. Staying healthy has never been more important. Regular exercise can help both prevent and fight illnesses. At the YMCA of Greenville, we are ready to help you and your family build your strength, endurance, flexibility, confidence, and immunity with personal training, group exercise classes, swim lessons, youth sports, and more, all from a clean, safe, and fun space. Join the Y today to protect your health. A warm September day to open the 2021 fall season. As we noted, Furman, they played seven games in the spring at North Carolina A&T. They didn't play a fall or a spring schedule in 2021, but a lot of the guys on their MEAC title team from 2019 are still on the roster as they foray into the Big South. The band clearing the field. Out at midfield, they're doing the opening coin toss. The North Carolina A&T players have come out onto the stadium surface as is Furman. You were down in the field, Jared, before the game. It's an artificial surface here at Furman. You notice the September heat 
can certainly be felt. Yeah, I had to change my shirt twice, Pete, because I sweat through the first one. Uh, it is hot on the field. Uh, these guys, as you see on the sideline, they've got the fans going. They've got the Gatorade pouring. Uh, but again, and you know, I talked to Coach Washington before the game, and he mentioned you know, his guys are ready. You know, he he has a new strength and conditioning coach. Uh, they've been working and preparing for this type of element. So I think you know, it would, I wouldn't be surprised if we see early on or later in the in the in the uh, second half guys cramping up uh, because they're just not used to actually playing in this type of environment. So something to watch for. North Carolina A&T after the opening coin toss will be on the receiving end. A Furman team three and four in the spring. It was cut short as were so many other SOCON team spring seasons due to various issues related to COVID. Only two teams in the conference played their full allotment of games, the Citadel and Mercer. But a Paladins team that they come into this game defensively feeling really good about themselves as they did in the spring. The offense had struggles. There were depth issues. We'll get more into that when they've got the ball. But this is a team that feels like it can compete for a SOCON championship. Pick tied for third in the preseason poll. But they know they've got to balance things out with a much better production out of the offensive side. Well, it really starts, Pete, with just, you know, getting back to normal. I think a lot of these teams, whether it's the SOCON or all over the country, uh, playing in the spring just was not their norm. And so getting to that, getting back to this norm, I think it's going to kind of settle the mind, the nerves, and allow them to, come, uh, you know, allow their talent to really come to the top. Clay Hendricks, the fourth year, fifth year rather, head coach of the Furman Paladins at his alma mater, 25 and 18, recently received a contract extension. He's done a nice job building a foundation. They shared the SOCON title in 2018, and our opening kick will go as a touchback, so the Aggies will go to work first offensively. After their return man, Bashol Tootin took a knee in the end zone. North Carolina A&T is all about the ground game. Really not only Martin, but we'll see a lot of work on the ground. They average 442 yards plus in total offense a couple of seasons ago. They ran for nearly 235, and it's a big day for the guy behind center, Jalen Fowler, who grew up not far from here over in the Spartanburg area, played at Dorman High. He's a grad student, fifth season in the program, and now he's getting his first career start. Yeah, Jalen's a great guy. I know his family. Um, really humble guy. I saw him before the game, and again, just he's focused. He's driven. You can see it in his eyes. Hope to see you have a big day today. And as you would expect, it's Martin on the first carry in two seasons for any running back for North Carolina A&T. Jermaine Martin is a guy we are going to see a bunch. Number 30 for this North Carolina A&T team. Began his career at Coastal Carolina. He's from Conway, South Carolina, but he's found a home with the school in Greensboro. And I tell you what, look at that offensive line. I mean, they are big, physical. I mean, I, <laughs> I think you and I could run behind those big boys, Pete. But it's going to be interesting to see how that offensive line holds up. Again, in this heat, haven't played in over 600 days, uh, to see how they come out and apply their uh, will on this Furman defense. Second down, Paladin step up. A Furman defense against the run that was second in the SOCON in the spring, under 130 yards a game, and some really good efforts. Only the Citadel and Chattanooga got above 170 yards in a game against them of the seven they played during the spring months. It's really important for that Furman defensive line to, you know, hold that line of scrimmage, cr create penetration, uh, really kind of get. Uh, you know, A&T off schedule and get them in a third and long situation like they have now. Third down and seven. Fowler, certainly a physical presence, 6'4", 235. His first attempt of the game. A little bit wide, Ooh. deflected, and Travis Blackshear of the Paladins was right there. Would have had a pick six had it bounced the other way. So... A three and out for the Aggies on their first possession here in the fall of 21. Yeah, and again, not a bad pocket. Again, he was able to survey the field. Uh, he made a throw. Receiver kind of slipped on the play. But great job by the Furman defense of getting three plays and off the field and getting the ball back for their offense to go, come on the field for the first time. Mike Rivers averaged just over 40 yards per punt a couple of years ago. Deep for the Paladins, Dewan Bell. No pressure applied. Bell at his own 35 off the bobble, grabbed from behind and taken down. Nice job. Hanging on by Miles Simon. 
and the Paladins will go to work just inside of their own 40-yard line. Their first possession in the fall of 21 is coming up early here at Paladin Stadium in Greenville. It's our season premiere on the Ingalls SoCon Game of the Week. Return to Rugged, the all-new Ruggedly Redesigned 2022 Nissan Pathfinder. Today, you have to deal with a lot of moving parts. You want everything to be on autopilot. We got a huge increase in orders, but it's not And to be prepared end. if anything changes. I'll be right in. With IBM, you can do both. Your business can bring data together across your clouds, from suppliers to shippers to the factory floor. So whatever comes your way, the wheels keep moving. Seamlessly modernizing your operations. That's why so many businesses work with IBM. Nice work, everyone. Uh, season this year, getting some live reps and how, having that game feel, I, I think would be, was very beneficial for him this summer and in this camp. But again, you know, both teams coming out, going three and out uh, early. I think it's really important to kind of iron out the wrinkles early so they can kind of get comfortable, get adjusted, get the butterflies and nerves down. Uh, so they can come out and just play good football. As you see, a player being attended to for the Aggies. Looks like DJ Crossin, a Virginia Tech transfer, one of their defensive backs, and a guy that Sam Washington, their head coach, spoke highly of. It was a pass that split defenders, and it appeared, as we could see when it happened live, that Crossin landed awkwardly, or at least maybe misdirected all of a sudden. And let us go ahead and take a timeout. So we'll come back and update you on the progress of DJ Crossin, player down on the field for A&T early on here at Paladin Stadium. X330E and X545E, the BMW electrified fleet. Join BMW's Accelerate into Autumn and receive a $1,000 credit. Health, suddenly that word seems more important these days as it's consumed all aspects of our lives and made our universes feel smaller than ever. But at Bon Secours, your health has always been our top priority and we're staying as committed as always to personalizing the right care for you. Because whether here or from home, we believe your health care should always revolve around you. Bon Secours, primary care for the universe of you. Visit bonsecours.com slash primary care to connect with the provider today. When you look at a diamond, what do you see? A multifaceted stone of remarkable strength, formed under intense pressure to shine brighter than all the rest. Hard edges, clean lines, with a fire inside. When you look at a diamond, what do you see? Ingalls, proud sponsor of Furman Athletics. Make your summer last during the Ford Labor Day sales event. Now is still a great time to buy a Ford. Choose from our F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 44 years. And from the freshest lineup of SUVs in America. It's the Ford Labor Day sales event. Drive one, buy one today. Just announced. Now get 0% financing for 72 months on the 2021 Ford F-150. Learn more at buyfordnow.com and see your Carolina Ford dealer today. Obviously, a very serious moment. DJ Crossan, you see, they brought the ambulance out onto the field. Based on what we can tell, and we hope to show you the replay here in a moment, he might have caught a, another player, maybe the leg or the knee to his head area, maybe his neck area, or maybe how he hit the turf. We're really not sure. You see Sam Washington, the head coach in his third season at North Carolina A&T, obviously very concerned about his player. What a run he has had in football. He played for the Steelers back in the 80s. He's in his third season 
and 19 wins over his first two seasons. Pretty impressive, in fact, the most in the first two seasons for a head coach ever at North Carolina A&T. And now his counterpart, Clay Hendricks, standing to Sam Washington's left. So let's take a look at what happened on that play. The Hamp Sisson pass. Crossing is number seven, the lower player in that picture. And you see exactly what happened. As looks like he took a, a knee to the head. Yeah, right. It looked like Amir McNeil, his teammate, just as the play unfolded mm. on the pass. That was intended for the tight end, Ryan Miller. So the two head coaches chatting and here very early on in the game. A stop and play for a very serious situation. We told you Cross in a Virginia Tech transfer when we talked to Sam Washington during the week. He could not have said uh, or heap more praise upon Crossing and all that he brought to the defense. You hope this is something that will not keep Crossing out for long. A player who we noted played at Virginia Tech after growing up in Greensboro and playing at Dudley High School. Yeah. And Amir McNeil, who made the contact with him, number 24 right there, you see the concern. Take another timeout. We will come back to Greenville and continue. Paladins and North Carolina A&T currently in an injury timeout. Diamond, what do you see? A multifaceted stone of remarkable strength, formed under intense pressure to shine brighter than all the rest. Hard edges, clean lines, with a fire inside. When you look at a diamond, what do you see? Ingalls, proud sponsor of Furman Athletics. fired up the grill for one hot dog? Seriously? Hot dogs. Better with Pepsi. <sighs> Three minutes to go in normal time. Quickly, Williams takes this. and play with the BMW 330e, X330e, and X545e. The BMW Electrified Fleet. Join BMW's Accelerate into Autumn and receive a $1,000 credit. A big bow box says a lot about a person. Like, they have a mighty hunger, a powerful thirst, and great taste when it comes to pro football teams. Game day and beyond, rep your Carolina Panthers with an official team big bow box. Health. Suddenly that word seems more important these days as it's consumed all aspects of our lives and made our universes feel smaller than ever. But at Bon Secours, your health has always been our top priority and we're staying as committed as always to personalizing the right care for you. Because whether here or from home, we believe your health care should always revolve around you. Bon Secours, primary care for the universe of you. Visit bonsecours.com slash primary care to connect with the provider today. Back in Greenville, South Carolina, an injury timeout continues here early on. And this is the first of a doubleheader to get things rolling on the Ingalls SoCon Game of the Week. 6 p.m. this evening on many of these same stations. Western Carolina's Catamounts begin the Kerwin Bell era, taking on the Colonels of Eastern Kentucky, a matchup of the SoCon and an Ohio Valley, a longtime Ohio Valley member, Eastern Kentucky. And that comes your way 6 p.m on many of these same stations on our next star network but as for what's happening here on the field below us the injury timeout continues you can understand the great care they are taking with dj crossin the injured player for the north carolina a and t aggies who moments ago looked like he took the knee of his teammate amir mcneil in his neck or his head area as each was trying to go after a pass from Ham Simpson intended for his tight end. Well, I mean, anytime you get an injury above the above the shoulders, um, you definitely have to take precautions with that, uh, especially in this day and era of the game. Uh, but, you, you, you know, even though we play against each other, uh, we're all one big brotherhood. And that's why you see both teams on a knee, both teams, um, you know, saying prayers and different uh, words of encouragement, um, hoping to see a speedy recovery for whatever it may be. Again, we don't know what's really happened, but, um, you know, it's, it's good to see they got him up and, and getting him 
um, in the back of the ambulance and uh, you hear the support from both teams uh, for the young man and all we can do at this point is just really wish him well and again you see the guys coming around him and showing support that's what it's all about that's why we love this game because of the family camaraderie um, from from both organizations you see the tight end for Furman Ryan Miller among the many Paladins going out to offer their support for Cross and great show sportsmanship North Carolina A&T players now will come across the field and wish their teammate DJ Cross and well we only know what we see we can only hope for the best for him you know it's interesting the NCAA and the football rules committee continues to take measures toward player safety which is obviously the, the most noble cause they can carry and they've made a point of emphasis even further cracking down on targeting this year. But unfortunately, this was simply a situation where the momentum of two teammates happened to lead to a collision at the same time. And I mean, hope for the best for DJ Cross. It's a, it's a dangerous game, Pete. I mean, you got, you know, 250, 300 pound guys running full speed, hitting each other. Um, that's not always natural. And but again, at the same time, um, the, the league and you know, the different conferences try to put different rules in place to protect players, uh, but you will still see accidents like this happen, and unfortunately, and again, we just wish the best for the young man and and uh, hope hope everything's okay. And now, you know, when you go through something like that, I mean, it's been quite some time. Now you got to get checked back in. You know, now it's fourth and long. Um, a and is going to get the football back, have their second possession. Can they kind of get the nerves under themselves and kind of, you know, establish that run game early, get a couple first downs, and kind of get in rhythm? We'll see. Furman punting the ball away when play resumes. Nice turnout here at Paladin Stadium. Things pretty much back to normal. Folks back in the stands. During the spring, we did see some Folks in the stands, there was obviously a great emphasis on social distancing over the past few months. Those restrictions have been eased up. So North Carolina AT and Jared, the mental aspect for them, they've seen one of their teammates and a guy, a very talented player for them, have to be taken off the field here under a very serious situation. You've got to wonder what some of the thoughts on that sideline are from an emotional standpoint. Well, I mean, the good thing is they have a coaching staff that's, you know, uh, communicates well and really has a great chemistry within that organization. So you know that Coach Washington and his staff, they're getting their guys refocused. And the leadership on that team, they're reminding them, hey, look, we're going to play for him. We're going to, you know, what would he want us to do? He'd want us to go out there uh, and give it our all. So, again, uh, that's probably the message that's being, you know, spoken on that sideline, and we're going to see how they respond once they get the football back after this punt. Tommy Bleakroad averaged nearly 44 yards a punt in the spring, and Corey Banks let it go. Paladins will down it inside of the 25 for North Carolina A&T. So a second time today with the football for the Aggies offense. They are pretty much a ground-oriented team when you think of their stars like Jermaine Martin, particularly out of the backfield. They did a good balance a couple of years ago when they had a fifth-year senior at quarterback Khalil Carter. They averaged better than 200 yards both rushing and passing. You get the impression, though, they're going to try to ride Martin a whole lot. Other playmakers include the guy we just saw on the punt return, Corey Banks. They've got a couple of young receivers, freshmen and Sterling Burkhalter and Jamison Warren. Several players, though, unable to play today for a variety of reasons, and particularly in the offensive skill area. Play action, Fowler, his first attempt of the game. The former Dorman High quarterback under the great Dave Gutschall is stopped for a little gain. It'll be second down. And again, they can't, you know, Fowler can run the football, but he, he is a really good passer when he gets the opportunity. But they, they need to really establish the run early. On first down, getting that, getting that positive yards. When you can run the football early, Pete, it makes everything else better for you. You're able to throw the ball down the field. You're able to milk the clock. You're able to keep, you know, have uh, plays that, you know, take away the uh, opportunity of turnovers. So again, they need to establish the run and, and getting behind schedule on first and second down is not where A&T wants to be. A couple of years ago as a backup, Fowler had 12 carries for just over 50 yards. First completion of the day, it's Banks for a first down. Eventually wrapped up and dropped shy of the 40, but the first really positive play before Ivan Yates got him for the Paladins. And that's what Fowler needs, you know, rolling him out the pocket, getting him 
an opportunity to see the whole field, go through his different progressions, and then make the good throw to Banks to get the first down. Now they can kind of calm down. And again, I wouldn't be surprised if they start handing the ball off to Martin here, trying to get him established early here in the first quarter. 15 yards on that completion. Each team going three and out the first time they had the football. Play action in stride into Furman territory. Nice RPO right there by Fowler. You see pre-snap, he's getting everyone lined up the right way. He understands making this read and makes a nice strike across the middle. Another first down for this A&T offense, and they're just rolling now into Furman territory. Back-to-back -back receptions for Corey Banks, preseason all Big South. This Aggies team picked third in the Big South, which is really coming along as a football conference. This year they've got a record nine teams playing football in their league. A newcomer, North Carolina A&T, also Robert Morris of North Alabama, have joined the football ranks of the Big South. Off the pitch. Flag thrown in. Martin hopping over a man to... Get close to the 40. Let's see what the penalty marker is all about. Jerry Wellmaker, the referee on our Southern Conference crew today, and this one's coming back. Guilty parties, Ron Hunt, one of the wide receivers for the Aggies team. And see, again, that gets you off schedule. You know, and again, you, you can't get off schedule when you're going against a very good firm and defense um, like a is going to see today. But again, I want to see how can how does Jalen bounce back? That that was kind of the first penalty of the game. Let's see how he, he, play, he bounced back on this play to see if he can get them back in on schedule. Martin gets a breather. Keyshawn Baker runs right side as they were pushed back into their own territory, but Baker able to clear midfield in his first carry of the game. They've got some depth behind Martin. Baker's a fifth-year senior out of Farmville, North Carolina, number 25, standing next to Fowler. And Sam Washington, the head coach, says he thinks a difference maker for them is a freshman, Bashol Tootin, who I'm sure we'll see at some point out of their backfield. Yeah, he said Tootin is really extremely bright, young individual, someone that really has some um, just raw, natural talent I uh, wouldn't be surprised to see him in the rotation early. Still second down and long. Second and 16. Pressure comes. Fowler does well just to throw it away as the Paladins sent the troops. And the Paladins can do that, Pete, because it's second and long. Now you know it's a, it's a passing situation. Um, you can bring some more pressure, bring some more pressure on the outside, get the, the young quarterback uncomfortable, and make him make a bad decision. So now third and long, that defensive line, they can pin their ears back and really get after the quarterback. Wouldn't be surprised if you see some pressure coming from the outside or inside from this Furman defense. Ivan Yates and Jeremiah Jackson for Furman, forcing Fowler to throw it away. So third down and long a couple of seasons ago, North Carolina A&T was 42%. On third downs, trying to convert here, and nice. it's Banks. Great job turning around, just enough for the first down near the 30. Great job, Jalen looked to the left, threw the defense off, came back to the right, made a nice strike to keep the drive alive. Watch here, watch his eyes. He looks left, looks left, get the defense going, comes back to the right, nice strike. Great job, and that tells me right there, he's been in the, in the film room. He's been coached right. He understands how to look the defense off with his eyes, but knows where his receivers are and makes a good throw to keep the drive alive. Great job by the young quarterback. Third catch for Banks, the South Carolina transfer, and the third on this drive. Now you're back on schedule. First and 10, established to run again. Looks like we got some miscommunication and they have to burn a timeout here. But hey, you got a fresh set of downs in, in positive territory. That's, what, that's where you want to be if you're a &T. Sam Washington wants to talk things over. North Carolina a &T, their offensive coordinator is Chris Barnett. He also coaches their quarterbacks. And early on here, after going three and out their first possession, doing a nice job. Moving inside of the Furman 35. I mean, this is a talented team, Pete. I mean, again, you got to remember, this team back in 2019, um, you know, they won the HBCU National Championship, you know, in the Celebration Bowl. So they have a lot of talent. They haven't hit anyone that's not, 
in their own jerseys in, in over two years. They're, they're 623 up. days was the last game. That's, I mean, that's ridiculous. I mean, so at least the Southern Conference teams and the league did a great job of at least having a spring season and one that that had enough games played that a champion VMI was established through it all. But right. Boy, it just had to be tough. You feel so badly for these players for North Carolina A&T and the others in the MEAC, the conference they were in. Right. And then the other schools that couldn't play at all in 20 or 21, either FBS or FCS. First and 10, Fowler out of the timeout. Nice job. Nice job by Baker. Ducked down and got some positive yards. Really nice compliment is Baker, who's not as big in terms of his physical size, to Martin, who's 214. Baker's 170. Yeah, but again, they both have that top end speed, and that's what makes them so lethal, um, you know, on offense as a weapon because they can they can both take it to the take it the distance if they get to that second and third level. Watch the interior of this offensive line, though. They have a really good center um, in Dequari Wilson. Uh, Coach Washington was raving about him a lot in our call about how he takes control of that offensive line. So watch that center position to see how they create um, those holes up the middle. I wasn't sure that was a forward pass on the drop by Baker, but immediately it was indicated to be incomplete and not a live ball, just a little bit in front. Big third down, though, here. A&T one for one on third down so far. I should say on this drive, one for two in the game. Fowler with Baker to his right. Baker diving attempt incomplete. Step for step, Braden Gilby for Furman. Might have shielded the view of the intended targets. A fourth down decision time from the Furman 30 for a and Looks like they're going to send out their freshman kicker, Andrew Brown, and try to get points. Off of his foot, Brown at a Lexington, North Carolina. First attempt of his collegiate career. Just inside of 50 yards has the distance, and it's good. Nice. 47 yards. Now there's some whistles after the fact. There is a penalty flag down at the 30. This could be big, Pete. Still waiting for the indication. And the I think it's going to go against Furman. So you see, penalty decline, field goal will stand, and North Carolina A&T taking a first quarter lead here in Greenville. Three nothing our score off the 47 yarder on the first collegiate attempt for Andrew Brown. So Sam Washington, longtime defensive coordinator for the Aggies before he was promoted to the top job ahead of the 2018 season. We told you, very impressive. 19 wins in his first two years as the head coach. That's him with the headphones clapping right there on the far left. And, and again, that's a good drive for A&T. You know, they came down the field. They converted on some big third downs. Um, they didn't get the touchdown that they wanted, but they were able to put points on the board and kind of get Jalen you know, get those butterflies out, get him calmed down, and allow him to kind of get some type of rhythm. Um, and that's what they want to do. They want to keep it simple. They want to be able to, you know, run the ball, protect the ball, and also be smart and things like that. So, again, I think that was a very positive drive. Now, give, you know, they can come to the sideline, get some adjustments, and go back out there the next time and hopefully have a similar uh, result or even get a touchdown. Wayne Anderson averaged about 18 yards per kick return in the spring. Brown handles the kickoff duties as well for A&T. Anderson inside his own five. Little head fake, but wrapped up and dropped just beyond the 20-yard line. Paladin's getting ready to go back to work offensively for the second time this afternoon and getting back to some of the things they're trying to do offensively. And again, Clay Hendricks adamant in our pregame talk about the fact that the offense in the spring maybe wasn't on the same page. We noted earlier they're trying to make the offense more user-friendly. 
their running backs seem to have been with the program forever. They're trying to maybe figure out some ways to get them in. We saw Dominic Roberto and did not see Devin Wynn on the first series of the game. And Wynn now back out there, the deep back, but flags thrown and whistles before the snap. And this one's going to walk Furman back five yards. And this is the kind of stuff that's going to that's going to drive Coach Hendricks crazy. You know, you're trying to establish the offense. You're trying to, you know, get some momentum going. Uh, you're playing at home. It's the first game of the season, and you got guys jumping off sides, you know, on a false start. It's little things like that um, that you really have to get out early. Um, but, again, they have all these different running backs, but it really determines on how that offensive line plays. If that offensive line can't create holes, can't get a hat on a hat, create movement, you can have all the best backs in the world, but you're not going to do anything um, no matter how user-friendly the offense is. So watching that offensive line, he said he felt good about it. He, he felt that they had a good camp. He felt like they got better. Uh, they have more depth at that offensive line position. So let's watch and see how they play. That's going to dictate and determine how well successful this offense is going to be. Sisson with pressure coming, simply throws it away. Nice job forcing him to get rid of it before he wanted to by Alex Fumba. Play before that, we saw Wynn's first carry. He led the Paladins with 511 yards in the spring. A couple of years ago, the last time there was a full season in 2019, he was fifth in the SOCON, zero right there toward the bottom of your screen, over 1,100 yards. And they've got another Devon. They seemingly lead the nation in Devons. That's Devin Abrams lined up to the right of Sisson with a third down and 12 coming up. Over the middle, Bell in stride has the first down. Might have gone for more, was quickly hit. Huge play for the Paladins offensively, their best so far to get him out to the 35 and keep the drive going. Ends up covering 16 yards. And Fumba, if he doesn't hit Bell just about after he caught the ball, Bell might have gone significantly further. Absolutely. And again, great job by the offensive line, creating a pocket for, for Hamp to sit there and get the ball out, survey the field. And again, both teams now have converted a third and long. Let's see how Furman can try to continue this momentum on this drive. Win off the option pitch, not a whole lot happening. If you're just joining us, we had a delay in this game. One of the starting defensive backs and a really good player, DJ Crossan. Injured with contact on a play from his teammate, Amir McNeil, looked like in the head or neck area. They actually had to bring the ambulance out to the field, and they put him on the stretcher with all of the security precautions in place when a player seems to have a head or a neck-related injury. So that causes a delay, but it's also caused North Carolina A&T to rely on their depth defensively. Important player for them. Fake handoff. The tight end in stride. Ryan Miller acts more like a wide receiver. Let him in the spring with six touchdown catches. There is his first grab here in the fall. And again, Furman's kind of picking up some momentum. Great job on the RPO right there. Hamp making the read, understanding where the mismatch was, and then, you know, making the great throw. Again, keeping the, mo keeping the chains going, keeping the drive alive. That's what Furman wants to do, and making this offense more user-friendly. Each of these offenses mirroring each other. North Carolina A&T went three and out the first time. They had the ball, put together a scoring drive, that ended with a field goal as that pass attempt is incomplete. And now the Paladins showing life, second time they have it. Exactly, and, and it's going to be interesting to see how this kind of fast-paced RPO offense, what kind of effect that has on the defense. Again, we mentioned how hot it is. It's even hotter on the football field. Uh, how does this de both defenses, can they stand up? Um, you know, with this kind of high pace uh, offense that they're facing. 10 play, 47 yard scoring drive when North Carolina A&T had the ball. They'd use that pitch a couple of times, this time to the right side and win. Pushed out of bounds. Twice they've run that to the short side of the field. I don't know, I would think wide side of the field, you let Win use a head fake and maybe have some room to create some space for himself. Yeah, but it's all about numbers as, as well, Pete. They feel that they have the numbers with the motion, with the guy in motion. They'll go to the side that, that they have the numbers in that mismatch. And so, again, whether it's the, the um, strong side or the weak side of the field, um, if you have the number matchup, you're going to go to that side. Forced out of bounds by Jacob Roberts, one of the athletic linebackers. Another third down for the Paladins, who in the spring were eighth Ooh. in the SOCON. Ooh. And a hard hit <laughs> on the receiving end. That was the top target in the spring, Ryan DeLuca. Let's see if he's got enough for a first down. Let's see if he's got his mouthpiece after that one. Man. 
Ka-ka-ka. <laughs> and he Woo. does a great job hanging on to the football. Yeah. Sure-handed receiver, 24 grabs in the spring. My God. Fourth down. And I think they're going to go look at the videotape because oh, man. Don't. they're going to probably look as much for targeting as anything else. We noted it's a point of emphasis Woo. once again this year. Can we get a replay on that? Can we Can we see it? I mean, that was... I, initially, I wasn't sure that he'd actually held on to the ball based on our view, but it's going to be fourth and two. We're going to take a timeout. Video review, we believe, to see if there was targeting on that hit on DeLuca. A&T up 3-0, opening quarter here in Greenville. Pizza Hut's Detroit-style pizza is back. Same crispy crust, cheese all the way to the edge, and the sauce still on top. Okay, now I'm hungry. The Detroit-style pizza. Create your own or pick from three signature recipes. No one out pizzas the hut. Some have a history of building the best trucks. But according to just about anybody who's handed out a trophy, Ram currently builds the best trucks. So if you're shopping for a truck today, here it is. If you're shopping in the past, well, good luck with that. That was then. This is Ram. Right now, get 0% financing for 72 months, plus no monthly payments for 90 days on select 2021 Ram 1500 models. With Jared Singleton, Pete Kennedy back with you, and targeting is the ruling. Alex Fumba, the big hit on that play. So the hard hit, and again, there are many different levels to which they will confirm targeting. And that's particularly if a player was exposed, uh, the offensive player was exposed to danger. But they looked at it, and a, another player in the linebacker secondary core for North Carolina A&T will have to exit this game, this time Fumba, as a result of targeting. Paladin's going to go for it on fourth down. And actually, first down, I'm sorry, based on the penalty, of course, for targeting, and that gave him the automatic first down. So here they go from just outside of the 15. This time a pitch. Anderson mm. runs into traffic. Great defense. See how that safety number 20 just kind of filled the alleys. You see, the, I think the, we got the replay coming up here on that targeting play. Yep. Can't leave the crown of your head. But even though it looks like he used his shoulder, I think because he led with the crown of his head, that's why they had the targeting call. But, I, you know, I personally, I, I think he led with the shoulder. I wouldn't have made that call. I thought it was just a strong hit. Um, but, again, the rules are the rules, and the rest are there to enforce it. Loss of a yard on that carry by Anderson. His first attempt of the day. And that pass over the middle. And, again, that motion is drawing that safety down to fill the gap in that alley. And what they do, what the quarterback's doing, he's reading that. And, and, if, and if his receiver has won his matchup, he's going to throw the ball where that safety is coming down the alley and try to get right behind him. Um, but again, great job. I really like the safety. Uh, number 20, I believe it's number 20. Yeah. Nigel Reams. He's playing a heck of a yeah. first quarter. Uh, so whenever you guys see motion coming, watch how he plays that. And then that's the kind of the guy that they're reading. Uh, Furman's reading to see where they do with the play. Third down, Sisson thought about it. Second effort, man open, win, touchdown. <laughs> Devin Wynn, the first touchdown of the fall of 21 for the Furman Paladins. Didn't have a touchdown grab in the spring. I think right there we see the user-friendly part of this Furman offense they hope to have for Sisson. I'm not so sure they have their running backs all that often in the passing game as they would have wanted back in the spring. Definitely not. But again, I mean, you have to you feel bad for a t because you see a quarterback breaking the pocket. So you go into try to, you know, make a tackle and he throws the ball right over your head. So, again, great job by Furman coming back, driving down the field. Um, having some big conversions on third down, third and long, and again, finishing and topping the, the drive off with a touchdown. Great job by the Paladins. Devin Wynn, fifth-year senior out of Greensboro, Georgia, against the team from Greensboro, North Carolina, gives the Paladins their first lead of the afternoon. 
solid drive on the second possession for the Paladins. It's Furman able to get that scoring toss of 17 yards to cap it off. Sisson during the spring, 12 touchdown tosses. but nine interceptions, so he's looking to be more efficient. And you get the impression that Clay Hendricks really feels like they can get to the version of Ham Sisson that they'll be happy with. They didn't have it in the spring, but they don't necessarily put that on him. And I think by evidence uh, of that drive we just saw, they didn't try to put too much pressure on him. The passes were high percentage. <clears throat> the one to DeLuca could have gone a lot of different ways had that been deflected, but... That was a huge play, and that ultimately led to a first down. And it's all about kind of trying to establish Devin Wynn early, getting him going, get that running game going. Um, because if you can run the football, it'll make the job real easy for Hamp Sisson because he'll have, you know, more of that play action, more of those matchups where he can, you know, take advantage of taking the top off of the defense, throwing the ball deep. So, again, that's, that's what they want to do. They, they, they want to rely on the run game, and they believe that will make it a lot easier for the quarterback here in the fall season. 32-yard return for Bashel Tootin, one of the exciting new players as part of the offense and special teams for the Aggies of A&T. So North Carolina A&T and Jalen Fowler out of Inman, South Carolina, former standout at Dorman High, his first career start, coming in the opening game on the road of 2021. Their quarterback had a fine high school career 2016 at Dorman, over 3,700 yards passing and 43 touchdowns, both Dorman records that season. You could see some confusion expressed from Fowler looking back over to the bench, and A&T will use another timeout here in the opening half. They didn't have the right personnel. You know, the offense came on the field. They were missing a guy, and they needed, you know, someone else wasn't focused, wasn't dialed in on the sideline. And, you know, they've run into the situation where they have to burn a timeout. So, again, I, I think you're seeing it on both sides. You know, Furman had a false start. You got personnel guys, not you know, not the right personnel coming on the field. You kind of expect that on the first game. But, again, first quarter is coming to an end, four minutes left. Hopefully they kind of get the, the butterflies and get all that anxiety out so they can um, kind of really focus in and play good football here in the second quarter and the rest of the game. Offensively, the big change for North Carolina A&T, at least the most noticeable, the fact that Fowler's now the starting QB compared to their last full season in 2019. Well, Khalil Carter did a nice job as a fifth-year senior in his lone year as a starter. First and 10 from the 32 for the Aggies. Didn't see Martin a whole lot in the late plays of that scoring drive that was capped off with a field goal, but stopped at the 34-yard line. And again, they really need to get him started early in the drive. You know, getting that first and, you know, that first down, getting, you know, three to four yards on that first down play is critical for a t to stay on schedule so they don't put so much pressure on Jalen and have to make the big throws on second and third and longs. Fake handoff. Looking long over the middle. Oh. Beyond the reach of Ron Hunt. But you can see the arm strength. Jalen's got a strong arm. Great job by the offensive line. Kind of giving him enough room in the pocket to see the defense, see what they're giving him, and making a great throw. Again, just a little bit too long, but you're, you see that arm strength that Coach Washington was talking about. And I wouldn't be surprised if they go back to a play like that later in the game. a t missing some wide receivers who would have been in their rotation who aren't available for this game, but we saw Corey Banks play a big role in their scoring drive. I like Hunt's an impressive presence at 6'3", 190. Third down, and so far in the game, Aggies are one for three. Once again, looking long, this time far sideline. Again, Hunt the target. Step-for-step -step coverage, though, by Ivan Yates, and an official is down, so play will be stopped right near the 40-yard line on the offensive end of the field. You see, not sure exactly what happened, but... We've seen a very serious injury for D.J. Crossin, a defensive back for A&T in this opening half. We've seen a targeting call as Ryan DeLuca made a catch and popped back up. That cost Alex Fumba his time in the game. And then we see one of our officials now in a collision. And then you got a flag on the play, too. Cam Brinson, the Furman safety, is the player that ran into 
the official and I can't tell exactly who it is. Mm. And let's see, I'm looking for the penalty marker. Wasn't sure if I. Yes, it's right on the 50, right on Furman's sideline. I think uh, a DB and, okay. and a wide receiver. There you go. They got into it kind of going towards yeah. the sideline. So just off the bottom of our screen, actually, before our score bar, below our score bar, you can see it. I'm assuming that's a penalty marker. Yeah. Yeah. And indeed, the attending right now, it looks like our umpire. Vaughn Cowan is the one who took the spill. Obviously, you play early September games in the afternoon in the south, you're going to get warm conditions, particularly on an artificial surface. And these officials coming into the game, if nothing else, making sure they're hydrated and so forth. Cowan, the umpire, is up. Looks like we'll go with one less official on the crew for now. We do have an alternate, though, Kevin Mack, and you would suppose that he will come out and replace Cowan. But Cowan able to walk off under his own strength. Frankly, I'm not sure what the protocol would be is if he's checked <laughs> out and able to come back in, if he can return to the game just like a player. <laughs> That's a trivia question you don't want to ask Jared about because Here, I have no idea. Here's a look again. And, and there are Looks like double personal fouls. No, it's just just on firm. Oh, it's just okay. I thought we uh, got a plural on the first foul. So Travis Blackshear, the guilty party. That's a big penalty on what was a Huge. third down play that Furman would have gotten the hole. But Blackshear called for the personal foul. That'll put A and T out at their own 49. And a, and a fresh set of downs too. So another penalty against Furman and Fowler and his offense stay out there. Martin looked like he tried to cut back to his left, lost his balance, and nothing doing. It'll be second and long. You know, I think Furman understands that, you know, if they can't put a stop to, you know, Jermaine Martin early and, you know, first, second down, it's going to be a long day. So Furman's defense has done a great job of really, as you see here on the replay, um, you know, condensing that box, winning the line of scrimmage, uh, holding their ground and creating that penetration. Um, creating this second and third and long. It's actually Jeff McElveen on the carry. First of the day for him. On the sideline, wasn't going to stay in. As Quinzel Lockhart did his best. Covered nicely by Demarcus Clay. So once again, third down and long for A&T. So far in the ball game, aided by that penalty the last time, but they're one for three on third downs. They were... Efficient in that category two years ago at 42%. Big third down play right here. Find the matchup. See what the defense is giving you. See the center calling out the, the blocking schemes. Fowler. He can run as well. Big guy to try to stop. Ooh. And he's dropped about a yard, maybe too shy of... The yard line to get, and it'll bring up fourth down. So decision time now for North Carolina A&T's Sam Washington. Going to be fourth down and two. At the 43 of Furman. He's going to punt it. Interesting call. I, I, you know, personally, if I had a quarterback 6'4", 240, I would go for it. You know, fourth and two, fourth and one. Interesting punt to punt the ball here. But, hey, that's why he's the coach, and I'm up here in the box. Mike Rivers, his second punt of the game. And it'll bounce out near the one, two. Let's see where they'll say it went out. I thought it was going to be right up against the pylon still. Nice work as Furman will be set back all the way to its own nine-yard line to start this series. First half of the doubleheader on our Ingalls SoCon Game of the Week. Season premiere Saturday, Western Carolina and Eastern Kentucky. Come your way on many of these same stations 
at 6 p.m. Scott Perswanski, Jay Sonhalter on the call for the Catamounts and the Colonels. The Kerwin Bell era getting underway in Cullowee, North Carolina tonight at 6 on our Next Star network of stations. So first and 10 for the Paladins, an impressive scoring drive. The last time they had the ball and a more comfortable looking Ham Sisson, I think, uh, Jared, is maybe the best way to describe him. Looked very comfortable again, made some good throws, you know, stepped up in the pocket, made some good reads uh, with the RPO game. And again, he understands that he has a great backfield behind him. He has a healthy and physical offensive line um, that has, a, you know, I think they have about eight, eight guys that are going to try to rotate in uh, the game today. So. Hamp should feel very confident going out with this unit uh, each and every possession. And again, trying to get positive yards, trying to make the right reads, understand what the defense is giving you, and then making the play. Three yards for Dominic Roberto. He actually started in the backfield in place of win today, but here is a burst of speed for the fifth year senior, Devin Wynn. He showed us his receiving ability with that touchdown catch just a little bit ago, and that is what he does on the ground. Makes him one of the best in the SOCOM. Watch the big guys up front. Everyone has a hat on a hat, creating openings and letting the back do what he does best. 18 yards, Paladins quickly with the snap. Bell wrapped up. Nicely read by North Carolina A&T, Miles Simon, number four for the Aggies, leading the charge. Great job. And again, this Aggie defense has a lot of speed. As far as going sideline to sideline, they might be one of the fastest defenses that Furman sees this year. Uh, and they're just so talented. I mean, this is a very talented group of guys from North Carolina a and And they're very physical. It kind of speaks to how they practice and how they've been practicing over the past, what, 623 days. Second down and eight, a physical 5'11", 236 pound Dominic Roberto. Safety Najee Reams coming up and making the stop. I'll tell you this safety, he's, he's really doing a great job filling the alley. He's understanding, he really gets that defense in the right play, making sure everyone's on the same page. And then when he, when he shows up in that alley, he's definitely delivering the mail. Another third down for the Paladins. Mm. Looks like a little bit of a bobble on the exchange. It's going to be close, though. First carry of the day for Kendall Thomas. And again, first carry of the season. Maybe some jitters right there, a little anxiety. And he got the first down. Just enough to get the first down. So the Paladins move the chains. That was an issue in the spring. They feel like they played well enough defensively in the spring to win a SOCON title. Trouble was, they were eighth in third down conversion. A huge stat, of course, at under 35%. But so far this afternoon, three of five. Might be our final snap of our opening quarter of play here in Greenville. On first and 10, play action, Sisson. Long over the middle, oh. diving attempt incomplete. And good coverage on the play as well. Zach Peterson, the intended target. And a great, that's a great job of Hamp Sisson really understanding Finding the one-on-one -on -one matchup, great protection by the offensive lines. You see right here, you know, the offensive line gave him enough time to really wind up and throw the ball deep. And again, you know, a little bit, I think the receiver should have caught that ball personally. Um, but great job by the offensive line doing their job. Peterson getting behind Aaron Harris. Win drop for lost yards on a second down carry. And that'll bring us to the end of the opening quarter of play. Aggies, they stopped the run. That's been a brand for them for a while. They were fourth in the nation two years ago. Opponents rushed for fewer than 80 yards a game against North Carolina A&T. But as our first quarter comes to an end, they're looking up at a deficit. Furman Paladins on the Hampton to Devon win connection. A 7-3 lead on our Ingalls SoCon Game of the Week. Some have a history of building the best trucks. But according to just about anybody who's handed out a trophy, Ram currently builds the best trucks. So if you're shopping for a truck today, here it is. If you're shopping in the past, well, good luck with that. That was then, this is Ram. Right now, get 0% financing for 72 months, plus no monthly payments for 90 days on select 2021 Ram 1500 models. There's this love I found. Can be spinning round This and every end Let the dream disappear
Supporter of Paladins Athletics celebrating him on the field today on Tommy Stevenson Day. He's more commonly known as the Tommy of Tommy's Ham House. Very popular eating spot in Greenville for many years that he decided to uh, retire and close a few months back. But well loved in the Furman community and the Greenville community and they're celebrating him today. Second quarter begins on our Ingalls SOCON Game of the Week with Jared Singleton, Pete Hannity with you here at Paladin Stadium. A SOCON Big South battle, Furman in North Carolina A&T. And a third down and long for Ham Sisson and the Paladins. Mm. And DeLuca, that time it's a tumble out of bounds. Not the hard shot he took in the opening quarter on their TD scoring drive, but enough for the first down. And Ham did a great job rolling out. You know, I'm a big fan, Pete, you know this. Uh, anytime it's third and long or a big play like that, getting the quarterback to roll out the pocket so he can survey and see all of his options, see where the defense is, see where his receivers are, and then make a good throw. Great job doing uh, by rolling out. Great job by the offensive line of giving him protection and keeping the drive alive. The physical Devin Abrams. His first touch of the game. In that opening quarter, Paladins had 99 yards, just 34 on the ground, but that's kind of... How North Carolina A&T makes you play, but Abrams, three yards on that first down attempt to the 45 of the Aggies. It's going to be interesting, Pete, now that we started the second quarter, the emotions and all those things are kind of should be out the window. Now guys can kind of settle into the scheme, settle into the, you know, the strategies that both teams want to implement and go out and execute at a high level. Sisson, 6 of 12 passing so far. And beyond Bell. And nearly into the hands of Simon, the defensive back, not far from him. Good coverage once again by your guy, <laughs> Najee Reams. You really like that I, I, fellow right there, the grad student out of Durham. I mean, he has coached really well. I mean, he, you, can, you can see that he spent a lot of time in the film room working with the defensive coaches, understanding what different looks down and distances are going, you know, what you can expect, uh, and getting his guys um, in the right position so they can be successful. He's having a heck of a ball game so far. Paladins looking to convert again on third down in this drive. They're four of six in the game. Sisson with Bell oh. taking a hard hit, but he's got the first oh down as God. he stood up just inside the 35. <laughs> again, but he's all over the place, man. He is all over the place. He is pumped too. And that play right there, I was going to mention it earlier when the targeting was called against Fumba that led to his ejection. I really think to avoid targeting, players are going to be coached. Look, at all times, ex extend your arms on any kind of contact. Going quick, a spin by win off the reception. Only Reams to beat, but another defender able to cut him down before he got to the goal line. Amir McNeil saves a TD, but Devin Wynn, second big catch in this game. Well, Devin Wynn showing that he might need to be put listed as a wide receiver and not just a running back. You know, he's showcasing the full package, being able to use his hands as well as his feet. Getting to your point, Pete, I I'm not sure. You know, that's the thing that these coaches you know, we put we asked so much of our of our coaches to, uh, you know, have to teach guys and, and, and all these different strategies, things like that. It's going to be interesting how they, you know, try to implement a new way of tackling with this whole head to head, you know, um, targeting rules, things like that. You might have guys going at knees and now you, you see more ACL injuries and things like that. So is that what you really want to try to promote? I'm glad I'm not in the business to figure that out, you know. Little foot pass ahead to Bell, loses two yards. So far, 13 plays on this drive, covering 85 yards, began in the late stages of the opening quarter. And based on the fact the play clock was winding down, Clay Hendricks electing to use a timeout and talk things over. Paladins in the red zone back in the spring. They were fourth in the SOCON in red zone offense. They were 12 of 19 on scoring touchdowns. They're going to try to convert for a second time in the A&T red zone here this afternoon as they look to build on this 7-3 advantage. And A&T at this point, they really have to have a bend but don't break mentality. You know, they've given up a lot of big plays. Um, but their defense is well coached. Again, they have a lot of talent. Uh, they have a lot of experience on that defense side of the football. So how can they rely on that to, you know, only allow Furman to get a field goal and not get a touchdown uh, here in the second quarter? 
North Carolina A&T. They're the largest HBCU school in the nation, an enrollment of roughly 13,000. We've talked about the fact this is their first game as a member of the Big South Conference. They left the MEAC, the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, for which they were a founding member back in 1971. Their folks tell us that they just felt like they needed to go to a, a league that, that could help their athletic programs a little bit more, and they, they find that in the Big South, but it was very difficult to lead the MEAC. And a, a lot of their alums, they heard from them. It's not been necessarily a popular move. Might have been deflected. Good yep. pressure applied that time by Henry Daniel. Big defensive end. Got a penalty on the play. And also a flag down. And the way this Furman team is building momentum, they don't need any extra help uh, with penalties getting them closer to the goal line. I believe the gentleman who just picked up the flag was the umpire who had to be. No, I was wrong about that. It wasn't the same guy. Oh, wow. So you don't see that all the time, but offensive pass interference in the red zone. Take a look. Yeah, he can't do that. So what happened was it looks like the receiver's coming in trying to do a rub route, um, you know, one of those natural picks. But instead of just, you know, being natural about it, he wanted to hold <laughs> He wanted to hold the defender, and that's not really uh, not really natural to hold a guy like that. Big penalty, though. Third penalty for Furman. Backs him all the way to the 21. Second down and goal from mm. back there in North Carolina A&T. They're showing win, what it looks like when he runs against a top five rushing D. Top five rushing D in a, in a defensive line that, again, They've kind of settled their emotions down. They understand what the strategies are and creating that penetration, creating that re re resetting the, the line of scrimmage and pushing the offensive line back. Again, this is a big ask because this is a very physical, very big, strong defensive line. Furman's offensive line is going to have their hands full all afternoon. That play lost three yards. Third and goal from the A&T 24. Sisson, time. Wide open. Oh. DeLuca. Miscommunication. Yet yeah, two guys covering one man. DeLuca was wide open. Hamp just didn't have enough time to make a good, good enough throw. The pocket was kind of collapsing on him, as you see. But look at the top of your screen. You'll see two guys covering one, one receiver, leaving DeLuca wide open as he crossed back into the middle of the field. Again, bend but don't break mentality. A&T giving up possibly just a field goal here and keeping this game very manageable for Jalen Fowler and the Aggies offense to come out and try to build on this momentum by the defense. Timmy Bleakrode was six of seven on field goals in the spring and he's perfect so far in the fall. 41 yarder for the Paladin sophomore out of Atlanta. They build on the lead early second quarter in Greenville. Now 10 to three over North Carolina A&T on our Ingalls SOCON game of the week. Nachos, better with Pepsi. Spink's chicken tenders aren't just fast and fresh. They're crispier, crunchier, juicier, saucier, spicier, legendary ear. Oh, so many options. One easy stop. Spink's, making life easier. Spink's drinks aren't just fast and fizzy. They're fruitier, chewier, bolder, creamier, slushier, bigger, refreshing ear. Oh, so many options. One easy stop. Spink's, making life easier. I learned that people are just looking for somebody to listen to them. You can't just start cutting somebody's hair and you're going to be quiet the whole time because you're not going to be in business long. <laughs> the South Carolina Education Lottery has provided over $800 million to help students attend technical colleges across our state. 
investing in a new generation of entrepreneurs, just like James. A big bow box says a lot about a person, like they have a mighty hunger, a powerful thirst, and great taste when it comes to pro football teams. Game day and beyond, rep your Carolina Panthers with an official team big bow box. This is Mountain Dew. A rush of crisp and refreshing flavor. Delivering a bold citrus kick. Do -do -do. North Carolina A&T was not only a factor for the title in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, but in 2019, their Celebration Bowl victory gave them another HBCU National Championship. Their third straight, and well, they have been right up there among the national leaders in the HBCU ranks for years and years. Sam Washington's team, they are a national championship team with their latest HBCU crown in 2019. Now they move to the Big South and look to make an impact in a new league. What a job he has done in two years to head coach and before that for many years under the great Rod Broadway. He was he's really focused on the culture. He's really focused on making sure that, you know, he created a championship at atmosphere um, and, and defined the standard as nothing less than excellent, you know, demanding a lot from his guys. Um, he talked earlier this week about how practices were so brutal um, because they have a high level of, of uh, competition and he they encourage that you know they want their guys to compete at a high level in everything that they do um, so again I, I think he's done a fantastic job over the past few years and and uh, a t is truly one of the powerhouses uh, in this league and Sam Washington, you've commented on how well coached their defense is, particularly their secondary, of course, in the 80s. A fine defensive back, primarily with the Steelers. And a guy who his philosophy overall is basically keep it simple. And he says, you know, we we just have a very simple motto. We do chicken, just like the old uh, KFC ad in which we just do our thing and don't try to get crazy. That was... Almost a disaster. Still doesn't work out real well off a high snap for Fowler. Paladins make him pay. A loss back close to the 20. Again, you got to take control. Again, Jalen's a great leader. Coach talked about his leadership skills. He's got to take control of this drive. He's got to get his guys settled down. Um, you know, kind of a high snap. Control the snap. He is a tall guy, but again, have that communication with your center. Say, hey, get it down for me a little bit and try to get back on track. Loss of four on the play. Got to be tough making your first career start on the road, let alone after the team didn't play games oh. for two years. Blackshear probably would have taken down Fowler had he not slipped to the turf. And it's going to be third and a mile for the Aggies. Not how you want to start this drive. Again, play action fake. And then as soon as you turn around, you got a you know, cornerback blitz off your, your backside that you didn't see coming. Um, and then just kind of lose his foot, footing there. <laughs> now third and a mile. Wouldn't be surprised if we see kind of like a, a draw play or, you know, a simple run play, maybe even a screen right here, uh, and then punt the football back and kind of play the field, field position game. But, uh, again, not a great possession by a t this particular drive. Aggies 1 of 4 on third down so far. Fowler unloading near sideline. Oh. Leaping attempt by Hunt. Incomplete. Yates was over there in the coverage. I don't know if Hunt would have landed in bounds anyway. He looked like he had he could have got one foot in if he would have, you know, been able to reel it in with his hands. But again, not a good possession um, by AT that particular drive. You know, hopefully they get a good punt here and rely on their special teams uh, to, to really flip the field for them. Um, but again, Furman is slowly but surely building more and more momentum. Now they've got a, you know, a 10 7, a 10 3 lead here in the second quarter, and they have a great stop there on defense. Uh, and looking to try to build on that lead here in the second quarter. Rivers from about a yard or two in his own end zone. Bell thought about a return. He'll step into his team's sideline, and Furman will get the ball back near its own 40-yard line. Paladins have scored 10 unanswered points, looking to build on their seven-point advantage on our Ingalls SoCon Game of the Week. AFLAC policyholders have been paid $37 billion directly. That's a lot of money. Did somebody say money? Get help with expenses health insurance doesn't cover. AFLAC is ready for prime time. 
Black. is an official sponsor of ESPN College Game Day. Ooh, how far to the next? Rest up, nine miles. How many? Cows in Texas, 10,900,000. Whoa, that cricket 5G Freaky is. fast, I know. Everything you want, including the price. Back to work on offense for the Furman Paladins. Their defense has limited A&T to just 12 yards over their past two offensive possessions after their field goal drive. A little dump off into the right flat. Hard hit and eventually knocked out of bounds with a 45 is Kendall Thomas. Thomas, uh, I think an X factor for this Furman offense. He's down to the depth chart behind Wynn and Anderson to the running back slot. Popped out of bounds. Check out the hard hit again at the end of this play. Looked like. Not sure if it was Joseph Stuckey who initially made that hit. Five on the play. Second down, five mm. off the play action. There's the big tight end, Ryan Miller. And again, that's that RPO. You know, understanding, seeing what the defense is giving you. You see that when you make that. Uh, you know, play fake and the defense collapse on the running back. You just throw the ball right behind that linebacker, that linebacker you see here on the replay, right behind him, and boom, that tight end's wide open. And you saw Miller coming off the field looking like he was feeling some pain, now being attended to on the sideline by an athletic trainer. He is an important part of what they do, Devin Abrams this time. And on first down, maybe picks up a yard. a and already has seen two key defensive players, at least two starters, exit this game. D.J. Crossan, a very scary-looking injury. It appeared to be in his neck or shoulder area, but he had to be taken off on an ambulance. And then Alex Fumba ejected on a targeting call. Both those situations coming in the opening quarter. Yeah, it's been a long first half so far for a and just trying to find some rhythm on offense. Uh, they make a few good plays, but, you know, trying to find that consistent rhythm, which is expected. Um, as you see, a nice run here on second down, but you got a penalty on the play. Looks like it might be a hold coming back. But again, you know, a t they haven't played in, in over two years, so trying to get that, that rhythm down so they can allow their talented guys just to be talented and, and uh, perform at a high level, just waiting for that to kind of click here. Jerry Wellmaker telling us that Jacob Johanning with the infraction, the offensive lineman for the Paladins. They like what they have. You mentioned they're trying to build some depth up front offensively. That's probably the area of their team that presented as, as much of a mystery as anything for them coming in was how deep could they be in their offensive line. But Johanning, one of their reliable returnees, he played his high school ball over at St. Joe's High, not far from here in Greenville. Well, I mean, you know, look, Hampson and all these running backs can have a great year, but it, it doesn't matter if unless the offensive line is producing. And that offensive line has to be a one unit. They have to be able to understand um, and be healthy throughout the whole year. So, you know, we could talk all we want to about the quarterbacks in the backfield, but if those guys up front aren't playing as one um, and they aren't healthy, it's going to be a long season for anybody. I think we've broken the code for the new theme of the Furman offense. That was Anderson and other running backs. So they've really been distributing the ball in the air to their backs. As Wynn with the touchdown TD, one of his two catches. We saw Kendall moments ago. He's got a couple. That was the first toss to Anderson. To try to acclimate the playmakers out of their backfield to compliment Miller and DeLuca and others. Devin Abrams on third down and 11. Before that snap, Paladins had converted five of their first eight so far. So fourth down, Clay Hendricks with his team up by seven. Midway through the second quarter now, let's see what he elects to do. I think he's probably going to go for it because knowing that it was third down 11, he made that, that run play right up the gut to kind of make it fourth and, fourth and uh, five or six. Makes it more manageable for his offense. On fourth down and six, Paladins will indeed go. In the spring, they were nine of 18 on fourth down tries. This is a big play for A&T's defense if they can get off the field here. Again, play your reads, understand what the formation is. Play clock down to zero. 
I'm not sure if they called for a timeout before that. So what they were trying to do was induce the jump, which would have set up a fourth and one, but A&T give them credit for being disciplined. And nothing else, they buy some room, does Furbin, for their punter, Bleak Road, and that's going to be what they will now do, sending him out there. And again, I, I would not have expected A&T to jump there. They're a very disciplined, well-coached program, well-coached defensive unit. They're not going to jump on a, on a fourth and, and five, fourth and six to create a, a first down possibility. So great job by Coach Washington's unit of, of getting the ball back. And again, can we see a, a, a better performance this drive for this offensive unit uh, as we didn't see that last time with A&T when they had, took the ball on offense. Paladins to get the ball back after the punt, or I should say Aggies to get the ball back after the Bleak Road punt. They trail by seven here in Greenville. Why is that man wearing face paint? What's the e-ticket? Can we get popcorn? Can we get funnel cake? Can we get ice cream? How many steps are there? What's offside? Why is that car a draw? How tall is that light? How tall is that? Can we come again? We sure can. Football season, the best time of year, no question. X vehicles available no matter what adventure lies around the corner. There's an X for that. Join BMW's Accelerate into Autumn and receive a $1,000 credit. Nachos, better with Pepsi. <sighs> I learned that people are just looking for somebody to listen to them. You can't just start cutting somebody's hair and you're going to be quiet the whole time because you're not going to be in business long. <laughs> the South Carolina Education Lottery has provided over $800 million to help students attend technical colleges across our state, investing in a new generation of entrepreneurs, just like James. This is Mountain Dew. A rush of crisp and refreshing flavor. Delivering a bold citrus kick. Do to do. North Carolina A&T has been stifled their past few possessions against this Furman defense. And they'll start this drive for their own 20. Jalen Fowler out of Inman, South Carolina. First career start. Came to their program in 2017. Haven't seen a whole lot out of that guy so far today. Jermaine Martin, though, on the carry. Just his third. Martin, had he had a 2020 season, probably would have jumped into the NFL draft. They consider him to be a pro prospect. He can play at the next level. He's got the speed. He's got the size. But they tell us that because of the off year, he kind of put on some weight that, let's just say, isn't we the good did. weight. Hey, we all did. Pete. Exactly. But you're not trying to get to the NFL, at least as far as I know. Anyway, Fowler on a second down carry and the long strides of the big fella at 6-4, able to get across the 30 for the first down. But that's what led to him coming back and giving them a dynamic yeah. weapon to now make a run of their new conference, the Big South. And, and again, Pete, you know, we, we talked coming into the game that Martin was going to be the workhorse. Um, you know, Furman's done a great job of, of really kind of mitigating his his productivity uh, here in the first half. But we're seeing now they got a first down, and he kind of getting in the rhythm. They ran the ball first down, kind of get four or five yards. See a good run right there by Jalen. Can they finish the quarter, 540 left, can they finish the quarter strong with a nice drive, put some plays and first downs together to tie this ball game up and go into halftime tied up? That I think that's what Coach Washington, is, but that was his message um, before they, they took the field. And let's see how Jalen, who's capable of putting together a, a drive for them to come out with a, a points and a touchdown. And you see they're kind of going back to their motto is just keep it simple. Run the football. And on this drive, that's yep. what they've been doing. Martin picks up a couple of yards on a, another carry. Second down, eight, 
throw behind the intended target. Banks, he was a big factor in their scoring drive with three catches, but he's been quiet since. Nice coverage over there. Michael Robinson out of Atlanta's Westlake. Yeah, and again, great co great coverage by the defense, creating a third and long. And again, but a ball that frankly was not well thrown because Robinson probably would have been in a position to make a tackle yeah. instead of knocking it away had it been a better toss. Absolutely. Big third down play right here, Pete. Third down hasn't been the Aggies' friend so far. Just one of five. Third and eight. Delayed handoff. Martin finds the going tough. They stand him up. And it'll bring up a fourth down punting situation again for North Carolina A&T. And firm with all three timeouts. Wouldn't be surprised if they take one of these timeouts to kind of keep, um, you know, they, they should get pretty good field position here when they get the ball back on this punt. Um, if they try to put something together and put more points and add more points to this lead that they have. Mike Rivers, junior out of Wilmington, North Carolina, has been busy so far today. Pressure came, gets it away. Good kick. Nice kick. A lot of hang time. Fair catch called for by Dewan Bell. Paladins will begin just beyond their own 25. We come back to Paladin Stadium here in Greenville, 2021 opener. Whining windows are flying off. The Today, shelf. your customers want it all. Yeah. You have to deal with higher expectations and you have to lower wait Sorry, times. Last one. With IBM, you can do both. Your business can unify apps and data across your clouds. So you can address supply chain issues in real time before they impact your bottom line. Predicting and managing operational issues. That's why so many businesses work with IBM. Yes. Dear Mainland, aloha. In honor of baseball season, my brother and I installed our own bullpen phone. So when the time is right, bring in the big wave. We call for a relief pitcher. One life, right? Mahalo. Back in Greenville, Furman back to work. We've kind of settled into a chess match here. Devin Wynn tries to get outside, but A&T's got guys who can chase him down. Nice job by Jacob Roberts, the linebacker. Furman did have a first and goal situation, and A&T eventually forced them into where they had to settle for a field goal. But for the most part, you're seeing the quality of the North Carolina A&T defense. There is a Aggies player cramp down. That's probably a cramp, and I believe that's Joseph Stuckey, a linebacker. P, I'll tell you, th those, those full body cramps or those like calf cramps, especially like I said, on a hot day like this, <laughs> I mean, excruciating pain. I mean, just terrible. I, I I remember those days back at Walford, and you would have to, you know, I mean, like the, the your knees, your calves. Does that just, ever happen? It happens to me all the time. I, I just oh. be, be sitting around or lying in bed, and all of a sudden I'll feel that cramp come on. And in a... Stunning development. I'm not in the same physical condition of someone like uh, Stucky or the other players on the field. So if it's happening <laughs> to someone like me, you would think that. But these poor guys on the uh, day in what? What are we in the mid 80s, close to 90 degrees yeah. on the artificial surface, which adds the heat. It really does. I mean, that, that artificial turf, I mean, it, it looks great, but. On hot days like this, and then also when you fall on it, I mean, you really, it really, you know, cuts you up pretty good. Hopefully, Stucky will be able to walk that off. They're going to need him to get back in the game. Hillside, New Jersey, played at Milford Academy, a junior, one of their starting linebackers. But again, this this defense is is so athletic, and they have so much speed. Furman, in my opinion, I don't think they're going to be able to go sideline to sideline with a lot of these types of plays and think they're going to get a lot of production. I think you have to attack a &T directly going straight at them or try to, you know, utilize the RPO game um, and, and take advantage of those mismatches somewhere on the field. Second down. Oh, wow. Great job. Knocked down big time. Boy, we have seen some good work so far out of Henry Daniel, 6'2", 235, freshman out of Creedmoor, North Carolina. That time, 
had he just been able to maybe get a little tighter handle on that ball, it might have reeled it in. He would have maybe gotten all the way to the house. One of my good friends, he coaches uh, defensive line at, at, the, at the Houston, Texas. Now, he always talks about that, teaches his guys, you know, if you can't get to the quarterback, put your hands up. Try to get a tip. Try to get a knockdown. Uh, shout out to Alan Smith. You know, because little things like that will, will help the defensive unit out uh, and create a third and long play right here. Now you're able to get the ball back with, you know, maybe three minutes left in the, in the quarter and try to put something together to tie this ball game. Tell you one thing, a ts defense, they find the ball. Taekwon King that time. Freshman from Dillon, South Carolina, great football town. Boom. They snuff it out on the screen play to Roberto, and once again we see Bleak Road to punt it away. And they do a great job of getting a guy on the ground. You see, I mean, they do a great job of tackling, you know, really wrapping guys up, gang tackling, getting them on the ground quickly, not allowing uh, you know them to possibly get a lot of yak and, and things of that nature. So, again, let's see what this a t offense can do. Can they finally put a drive together with three minutes left? Uh, they don't have any timeout, so they're going to have to move fast. They're going to have to be be smart with the football. Can that offensive line protect, give Jalen some time to, to survey the field because he's got a strong arm, he knows the offense, and he's got the athletes to put, put something together to get points on the, on the board. All right, so North Carolina A&T now back to work. We saw a lot of Jermaine Martin on that last series. See if they keep it with a guy who gained nearly 1,500 yards and average uh, FCS leading 7.7 .7 yards per carry in 2019. Hesitation that time, pulling his way toward the 40. He's a load, Pete. He's a load to bring down. And again, that's going to weigh on this, on this firm in defense. You know, having to try to bring a big back like that down throughout the game. Um, but again, you, you've got to run the football to kind of keep them honest and hopefully set up that big play opportunity for Jalen uh, as the game goes on. Play action. There's Hunt. He's been targeted a few times in this game. First time that Fowler able to find him on a completion out to the 45. You see that arm strength, being able to ride it in and then understand he's going to get popped but makes a good throw for his receiver to catch the ball and hopefully get upfield for a third and short. Third down and one. Quarterback power, it looks like. Oh, they shift. Okay. A&T just one of six so far on third downs. Martin, great anticipation. And the Paladin stuff it out. And who else but a guy who's been there for a long time Adrian Hope, yeah, great senior job. out of Ocala, Florida. This firm, I mean, right here, you pull in the guard and tackle to the left. Kind of surprised that the back didn't try to follow that guard and tackle uh, more to the left where, you know, his blockers were going. Uh, but again, great job by this firm of defense, collapsing the pocket, collapsing um, and creating a new line of scrimmage and getting that penetration to stop a t on that third and short. Mike Rivers. Once again on the punt. Juan Bell back deep for the Paladins. Rivers, a couple of seasons ago, averaged over 40 yards per punt. Bell able to tiptoe up the sideline and add a few yards after making the grab near the 10. So back to work offensively goes Furman. So you know, 114 to go, and the Paladins get the ball back, and they still have all three timeouts. They get the ball back and have all timeouts. I think, you know, honestly, Pete, Furman, you know, at this point, late in the second quarter, they should feel pretty good but not great about themselves. You know, they, they saw some good things. They still had some missed opportunities, but they were able to build some momentum uh, here in the first half that they can go into halftime, uh, try to make some adjustments and come back out in the second half with. a t you know, Coach Washington, I'm, I'm sure he's going to have a – a really hard, you know, conversation with his team in, in, in the locker room uh, because they're just not playing a t standard football. You know, they're not running the ball extremely well. They haven't had that big play down the field with their weapons on the outside yet. 
Um, defense has played okay. You know, defense hasn't given up a lot of points, and they, they haven't given up a lot of big plays. Defense has played solid. Uh, but both coaches, you know, are going to have some you know, different speeches at halftime with their with their uh, with their units, and uh, should be an interesting second half. Win 11 yards that time. He's got carries of 11 and 16 yards. Eight touches though, just 28 so far for the Paladins' top threat offensively. That time, backpedaling into the sideline off his third reception of the game. See the clock now under a minute to go before the intermission. And again, nice safe pass. Uh, kind of, you know, moving down the field. And again, you don't want to do anything silly with the football here. If it's not there. Sisson thought deep off oh. his back foot. Great catch in traffic. Wow. Great focus right there to be able to see that one all the way in. Zach Peterson able to pull down the reception. Remember, they tried to hit him long earlier in this opening half of play. That time, Peterson able to get it across midfield. 19 yards and a first down with about half a minute to go at the 46-yard line. Sisson looking long the other way, and wow. Mm. Amir McNeil was the closest player to that, and he's wearing a jersey for North Carolina <laughs> A&T. You know, going back to that play with uh, to Peterson, you know, uh, Hamp did a great job looking to the right, going through his progressions, didn't see anything, and then throwing back to his left to get that big first down play. I uh, saw some miscommunication there on that particular play, but again, um, you don't want to force anything. If, if it's not there, get rid of it, you know, throw it to your check down. Um, you know, you have the lead, you have the momentum so far in the first half. You don't want to do anything silly to turn the football over to, you know, allow that momentum to slip. 23 seconds to go, second and 10. Sisson over the middle for a win. That's a flag. Yeah. And there it comes in late. <laughs> Boy, I just love the reaction. Reams was the trailing defender, but I think they're going to end up throwing the flag on Richie Kittles. The safety, he's the one who had the most uh, expression. Florida Atlantic transfer, and you see, well, he, yeah, he made the contact, even though it, the ball, it looked like, I think North Carolina T would, a and would argue, it was a, not, catch not a catchable ball. But. but you don't know that in the moment, and you see that on the sideline, but he didn't know that. And, and honestly, you think about it, you know, he was the last, you know, uh, stage of defense, so, He'd rather give up a PI than give up a touchdown. So you kind of you kind of understand his, his thought process there. And again, he gave up 15 yards instead of like the NFL rule where it's, it's marked at the, the spot of the foul. Sisson, 16th completion of the day. Again, finds Peterson. He's now 16 out of 27. A couple of key plays here in this game with 13 to go in the second quarter. The flow of this game has been one where the defenses have seemed to control it. Furman up by seven, but... Boy, they can add on here. And right now, the seven-point deficit for A&T, you get the impression that that's maybe more of a mountain than it should be. As their offense has struggled to have any kind of consistency. Sisson, Boom. pressure from behind. He'll be sacked. Well, still a lot of football left, Pete. And again, this defense has had a bend-but-don't-break mentality. You know, they kind of take on that tough attitude from their head coach, as you see here, just stay, sticking with it. You know, guys working, working, working. He gets around the horn, boom, gets home. Great job um, by Big 94 right there making the play. Robert Porsche, his dad was a great one for SC State many years ago, then played in the NFL for the Lions, and now his son, who transferred from Virginia Tech, coming up with a big play. Furman using a timeout, six seconds to go. And I don't know if they'd have enough to take a shot at the end zone. Let's see if they... Simply send Bleak Road out there to try to extend this lead to 10 points of the break. And again, if you a and I think you've, you've got to be really happy with how you've played so far, especially, you know, they could have easily given up. They could have easily given up a big play. Um, but being well coached, they understand um, the situation and playing good situation of football, creating a, a second and long with six seconds left here in the first half. Uh, I'm sure Coach Washington's reminding them technique, compete, understanding the standard. On the flip side, you have to understand what Furman's looking at. Coach Hendricks telling his guys, listen, let's finish just the half out strong. Let's get a field goal, go up 10, um, make some adjustments, and keep building on that momentum. So, again, both teams have been competing well, um, but there are a lot of opportunities and a lot of football left here in the second half. Bleak Road hit a 
41 yarder earlier. This a 40 yard attempt. Missed it. When not a huge factor today and no good as he misses it wide. So Bleak Road, who was six of seven in the spring, now one of two this afternoon. Two seconds remain before the half. And I think it's interesting that we should note, Pete, as we watch this missed field goal here, that's a missed opportunity for Furman. And allowing a and to stay in this game by one possession by, through a touchdown, <laughs> you're really playing with fire. Because yep. this, this A&T team, as we saw back in 2019, they can put up a lot of points. And you don't want to allow them to hit that spark at the right moment in the second half. And they're one of three Big South teams in the top 25 preseason poll. First time that's ever happened for that conference. Yeah. They're picked third in their league, which gives you an idea of the quality of the Big South this year. And the Furman Paladins picked third in the SoCon and the kind of chess match you would expect to see when you've got two teams that seem to be of equal talent through 30 minutes of football. So halftime arrives here in Greenville. 10 to 3 Furman. The Hamp Sisson to Devin Wynn. Touchdown connection for the lone TD in the opening half of play. Seven-point advantage to the home team. We come back to Greenville after this. Today, you want data to be secured, and your customers want things to be seamless. With IBM, you can do both. AI helps you monitor threats across clouds, address regulations, and create all new experiences. Some have a history of building the best trucks, but according to just about anybody who's handed out a trophy, Ram currently builds the best trucks. So if you're shopping for a truck today, here it is. If you're shopping in the past, well, good luck with that. That was then, this is Ram. Right now, get 0% financing for 72 months, plus no monthly payments for 90 days on select 2021 Ram 1500 models. Here at Paladin Stadium, the Furman Paladins, a 10-3 lead at the break on the North Carolina A&T Aggies. On the field before you, you see one of the, the very great bands on the planet, North Carolina A&T. What shows they put on, not only for folks at their stadium in Greensboro, on the road, and all kinds of major events. You've seen them in phenomenal places over the years, and they are entertaining folks here. And so good to be joined by Ruby Downs of Ingalls, one of the many nice folks from Ingalls Markets we visit with throughout the year. Hey, football season in the fall. It's back. You're a big football fan, I know, and I, I know you're happy to have some normalcy. Now, Ruby, at Ingalls, what are some of the things that uh, folks can do to get ready for a tailgate? So Ruby Downs of Ingalls, and uh, I think we're going to make sure you've got the right microphone and headset on. You do. You know, Ruby, we're going to do something here in the land of TV that, by gosh, is going to show folks our technical savvy. Sometimes the cables get disconnected, and through the magic of TV. Oh, wow. Now I can hear you. And there we go. <laughs> we have audio. Yes. So, Ruby, let's talk about tailgating at Ingalls, as we have so many times before. Now, let me move that a little closer for you, too. <laughs> I'm sitting at home. I, I decide I'm not going to go to the game. So I want to do a tailgate in my home. Oh, I head to yes. Ingalls. How quickly can that turnaround happen? Oh, my goodness. You get on your cell phone. You call in. You make your order up. We will fix it up for you. And you just drive on by and pick it up. And if some of our stores has a curbside service, we can bring it right out to your car. Do you many don't even of, have to get out. Many of the Ingalls stores are still doing curbside yes, service? Yes, we have some that do that. You just call up. And if we have that one, that store, you Yep, they'll bring it right out to your car. Mm -hmm. Some of the things that one can get for their Ingalls tailgate, you got the you got the wings. We got the wings Those and are we got the star. fried chicken. You've got to have that fried chicken and the baked beans. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to a game, let's say, on a future Saturday, in, instead of sitting in the comfort of my home and watching the Ingalls SoCon game of the week, I would suppose I can call ahead and, and in one motion be able to stop by my Ingalls Market and pick it up. Is that true? Oh, definitely. It's piece of cake. You come in, just drive up, and they will bring it right out to you. 
Mm -hmm. Ruby Downs of Ingalls Markets. A lot of great things go on at Ingalls stores throughout mm -hmm. the year, campaigns to help those in need. And we're still a few months away from the holiday season. But And some and a lot of, of course, uh, fun things related to football uh, in addition to all that. But some of the things that Ingalls Markets are working on now that folks will notice when they head into their Ingalls in the coming weeks and months. Oh, Ingalls is all about community. We are always there to help people that are in need and football. Definitely. We yep. love our football. Mm -hmm. And yes. you, I, you'll see Ingalls signage all over the place, not only here at Paladin Stadium, many stadiums around the Southern Conference. Lots of stadiums has our, com has our um, signage everywhere. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah. And getting back to the whole tailgating thing, I don't want to forget about the fact that a star of any tailgate, an underrated star, is usually the, the dessert presentation mm -hmm. and the football cookies. And when I was oh, in some of the Ingalls stores yes. back in January, uh, I saw a variety of different cakes and uh, and cookies that will make all of your neighbors jealous if you have a tailgate party at your home. Oh, if you have a sweet tooth, you must come to Ingalls. We have amazing cupcakes. That frosting is to die for. And it will come in the colors of your schools, too, you know? For Furman here, we got the lovely purple. Yep. Yes. Exactly. Well, certainly great to all keep in mind as our football season progresses. Ruby Downs from Ingalls Market, so kind to join us here at halftime on our Ingalls SoCon Game of the Week. Ruby, have a great time as the fall continues. Hope you get out and see a lot of games. We'll probably see you down the road on these telecasts, too. Oh, but definitely. We will continue on here. A warm day, a competitive game at Paladin Stadium. Furman owns a 10-3 lead on North Carolina A&T in this first-ever meeting between the schools. We come back with more after this. Fifty billion transistors on a chip the size of a fingernail. As tiny as that is, what they can do is huge. Scientists project they'll use 75% less energy. And that could slash the power demands of data centers and quadruple the battery life of cell phones. Developed by IBM, this two nanometer marvel has a bright future ahead, making smaller carbon footprints possible. Do you really want a mattress with a memory? Ugh. Gross. Five years ago, I told you your mattress was awful. Remember this guy? And we're still using raw eggs, yes. Save on mattresses, pillows, and more this Labor Day at purple.com slash TV. Halftime continues here at Paladin Stadium. Now the Furman Band entertaining the folks at the break of a 10-3 game. Furman trying to open up the fall of 21 with a victory. And we welcome you back in with Jared Singleton, Pete Yannity with you. And in the opening half of play, we talked about the defensive struggle that this was. And I think the scoreboard bears that out. So does some of the other <laughs> statistical numbers as well. Yeah, I mean, absolutely right, Pete. I think that, uh, as you see here, a and T's defense has done a pretty good job, you know, not giving up a whole lot of points. It could be a lot worse. You know, they've had the ball. Furman's done a great job offensively, I think, uh, with, you know, putting drives together. a and offense just hasn't really clicked yet. You know, they still are trying to, you know, get guys the right personnel on the field. They're still trying to, you know, make those big plays, and they have the athletes to do it, um, but it just hasn't come together yet. But Furman, again, let's give credit to Furman. They've done a great job putting drives together, um, some missed opportunities with the field goals and penalties. Uh, but again, I think both teams right now are making the right adjustments, and it'll be interesting to see what they do when they come out here in the third quarter. Well, let's take a look at the numbers over the first 30 minutes of play. Based on the fact that Furman was pretty good in third down conversions, you would think that it's a Paladins team that would have more than just a seven-point advantage. But uh, so far, it's a... Paladins team that has moved the ball well. They did have a first and goal situation that led them to settle for a field goal, but I, I think North Carolina A&T has shown their defensive ability to, to react and to contain. Bend but don't break, right? I mean, again, Furman's done a great job with, like you said, uh, you know, completing on third downs, moving the ball, putting the drives together. Um, but a and they, they're able to step up when it counts the most, when it gets close to the goal line and not giving up a whole lot of points. 
again, I, I really think it's a pretty close match game, even though a ts offense doesn't have the uh, the rushing yards or the passing yards compared to uh, Furman, but they, their defense has kept them in the game, and they're going to continue to keep you know, relying on that defense as the second half goes on, but that offense has to step up and to give them an opportunity to compete to win this ball game. North Carolina A&T prides themselves in stopping the run. Furman managing 47 first half yards on the ground. Paladin so holding a run-oriented A&T team to just 17, and again, passing yards a key set in the opening half of play. Paladins have already bested what a&T allowed in the 2019 campaign. Halftime continues here in Greenville. Furman, the 10-3 advantage. We'll take a timeout, come back, show you first half highlights as the Furman Paladins and A&T Aggies battle here on a September afternoon. It's not the truck you drive, or the uniform you wear, the people you inspire or the sacrifices you make. The greatest part of being a hero is the impact you have every single day. We thank you. Hi, I'm Liz Carmouche, and this is my home base. Every change we make, every just we make to the home, it's our little tag on making it our home space. One of the main reasons we moved out of here was for the sense of family. So we wanted to have an area where he could actually play in the yard, have a home where he can move around with and have a play area, because in our previous home, he didn't have any of those things. Come check out my home and see what my life is like outside the cage with USAA's home base on ESPN YouTube. Halftime continues on our Ingalls SOCON Game of the Week. Furman up 10 to three with Jared Singleton, Pete Gannity, Back with you here at Paladin Stadium. Opening half and in the late stages, Furman attempted the bleak row try of 40 yards to no avail, but I think they probably were more inclined to go for a field goal there because they're going to get the ball to start the second half. Then had they been kicking to start half number two, maybe they would have tried to go for it in that fourth down play. But let's take you back to opening half highlights. Uh, Paladin's team that kicked it away to the Aggies of A&T. Each team went three and out on their first series, but North Carolina A&T put together a 47-yard drive, and Andrew Brown, his first career attempt, a 47-yard field goal for a 3-0 lead. Jalen Fowler and Corey Banks were a big part of that scoring drive, Jared. And Fowler getting his first career start, former standout at Dorman High, and boy, Banks, a South Carolina transfer, a big weapon for them. Yeah, I mean, he really did a good job sitting in the pocket when he had time, surveying the field, was able to find his receivers, find the matchups that he liked, and execute the play. They're going to have to do more of that here in the second half. Furman, they were able to do a good job as well as far as, you know, stopping them on defense, creating a lot of pressure, creating, getting in, in Jalen's face, making some, making him force some throws that probably he wouldn't have made if he, did, if he had more time. So Furman, again, they just weren't able to finish the drives. So they were able to move the ball up and down the field. I'm sure Coach... Um, you know, Hendricks talked about that at halftime, trying to find ways to finish drives with touchdowns and points. They finished that one there. Their lone touchdown drive of the game came in the opening quarter as Devin Wynn on the receiving end. Wynn, a main weapon for them out of their backfield, but in the spring, he was relatively quiet in the passing game for Furman, but they have changed that tone here in the fall. Their running backs very much in the line of sight of their QB, Hamp Sisson, to go along with their big tight end, Miller, and their wide receivers. Second half of action coming up. Furman, a 10-3 lead. They lost the final three games they played in the spring, so they're trying to get back in the win column. And we've got our third quarter on the other end as we play football just below the beautiful mountains in Greenville, South Carolina. Fifty billion transistors on a chip the size of a fingernail. As tiny as that is, what they can do is huge. Scientists project they'll use 75% less energy. And that could slash the power demands of data centers and quadruple the battery life of cell phones. Developed by IBM, this two nanometer marvel has a bright future ahead, making smaller carbon footprints possible. Pizza Hut's Detroit-style pizza is back same crispy crust, cheese all the way to the edge, and the sauce still on top. Okay, now I'm hungry. The Detroit-style pizza. Create your own pick from three signature recipes. No one out pizzas the hut. 
Second half about to get underway at Paladin Stadium, Greenville, South Carolina. Great to have you on board wherever you're tuned in today along our Next Star Network for the season premiere of the Ingalls SoCon Game of the Week. Furman, the seven-point advantage with Jared Singleton, Pete Gannity back with you. North Carolina A&T has held the line as we talked about during the half, and Andrew Brown will get ready to kick it away to start half number two. But I think, though, at some point, you're going to seem to see a spark either out of Fowler and Banks again in the passing game or Martin on the ground. But first things first, they're getting ready to play some defense. Bell on the return has a seam to Juan Bell, a player who showed so much promise in the program. Fourth year junior out of North Augusta. Nice return to start things out in half number two. And I think if you're firm, you've got to come back out with the same attitude that you had to start the game with. Understanding that your backfield is your strongest asset on the offense. So, you know, what do we do? Let's come out and run the football. Let's establish the run early. Continue to wear down this ANT defense because, again, it's hot. This is the first game in, in quite some time for this ANT defense. They can probably only hold up for so long. So let's try to let's test them out. See how, how long they can go. The pitch looking for room and finding it is Thomas mm. and a hard hit at the end. And once again, there's the safety. <laughs> Najee Reams for ANT. I tell you, Najee Reams is making a name for himself. I mean, just watch. He he sees this, understands his responsibility, and just makes a great shows up with bad intentions and makes a big hit on the running back. But again, great first first down play for Furman. You know, creating a second and three. That's where you want to be. And once again, a wall up the middle. Thomas again. They use him. On the inside for the first time today. Had just 12 carries in the spring for 84 yards. A&T, tough team to run on, not only between the tackles, but out on the boundary because you've got a guy like the safety Reams who in 2019 had 38 tackles, a lot of those coming in run support. Yeah, and again, this, this defensive line for A&T, they're big and they're physical. So here on a big third down play, let's see who can win the offensive line or defensive line scrimmage. Paladins 5 for 10 in the opening half. Looks like they're going to be close here Run by Dominic, Roberto. Dominic Roberto though stop shy by at least a yard that's a huge win for the Aggies coming out uh, coming out for the half I mean being able to force a three and out and really takes away some of the momentum um, that Furman was able to build in the first half let's see what they can do um, as they get the football back can they have they made some adjustments uh, to really give Jalen an opportunity uh, to get more production here in the third quarter. Those punters have been busy today. Bleak Road gets away. A boomer. Wow, what a kick. Oh. Landing in the far end zone. Tommy Bleak Road following a line of great kickers and punters here at Furman. His long in the spring was 69. That one was close. Timeout on the field in a 10-3 game. Make this the summer you taught them what it means to serve. The summer of hauling happiness by the ton and bringing home hardware by the handful where traditions were passed down on the tailgate. And the only thing more powerful than the feeling was the truck that took you to it during the Ram Labor Day sales event. Right now, get 0% financing for 72 months, plus no monthly payments for 90 days on select 2021 Ram 1500 models. Ooh, how far to the next rest stop? Nine miles. How many? Cows in Texas, 10,900,000. Whoa, that cricket 5G Freaky is. fast, I know. Everything you want, including the price. Aggies ball for the first time in the second half on the front end of our Ingalls SoCon Game of the Week doubleheader, Western Carolina, Eastern Kentucky to follow at 6 p.m. Kerwin Bell era beginning in Cullowee. Jalen Fowler and the Aggies still looking up at a seven-point deficit. First time with the ball here in the second half. He's four of 13 by air. Martin, seven carries, just 15 yards in the first half, but ahead of steam as he to runs to the wide side. And again, just trying to establish the run game early. When you're able to run the football, it makes everything else a whole lot easier. And so getting that positive yards, second and six, that's very manageable. You know, wouldn't be surprised if they run the football again, rely on this big physical offensive line, um, and create a third and short uh, situation. And that's a whole lot easier 
uh, for a, a, a quarterback like Jalen who's making his first start. So on number on three, Cam Brinson with a good open field tackle for the Paladins. Second down and six, Fowler. And oh. intercepted, Travis Blackshear. Hunt comes from behind to take him down. First turnover in the game, and Blackshear, an interception back in the spring, and a Furman team that tied for the lead in the SoCon with eight picks, and he gets the crown, does Blackshear, with the first interception for his D here in the fall. Blackshear did a great job reading the quarterback's eyes and came off of his man and got into another zone and made the interceptions. Great job right there, reading the quarterback eyes, and then again, making a big turnover critical here in the third quarter to get that momentum back on the Furman sideline. Great job. So they've got the the hat or the, the crown. <laughs> <laughs> it does look regal with the purple. That, yeah. that fits it yeah. quite well. There is a Paladin down being attended to and now being helped to his feet. Looked like a cramping situation for Matt Chachovka, one of the defensive linemen, but Blackshear, really good talent. Preseason all SoCon player at three Passes broken up in the spring. They lost their top defensive back in terms of interceptions. Darius cares to graduation, but Blackshear will really be a leader. And I, I would suppose the protocol is he gets to wear that hat until he has to put his helmet back on to go back out on the field. Well, I hope the right protocol is to clean it, you know, with all the COVID and things like that and make sure they're keeping, uh, keeping everything clean and sanitized. But, yeah, you're right. Um, I, I think right now this is a big time for this Furman team right here in the third quarter. They had a big turnover. You're in, you're in plus territory. Take a shot, you know. Offensive line's had a good, good game so far. Let's take a shot down the field, see if we can get a cheap one real quick, and really put the pressure on this A&T team uh, early in the second half. So the defense rests for the Paladins. The offense takes over at the 41 of North Carolina A&T. Play action, Sisson, man in stride, and room to run after the catch. Joshua Harris, quick slam after the turnover. That's how you like to attack teams. You get the ball back and you strike in a hurry, and the Paladins build on their lead. Strike while it's hot, again, the RPO game. He saw it, he liked his matchup, made a great job by the offensive line, creating that time, and he made a direct, nice strike to his receiver and his receiver did the rest. Really putting it on right now here in the third quarter. Big moment for the freshman out of Noonan, Georgia. 41 yards, his first catch as a Paladin. Guy they think can make a lot of plays for them. So Hamp Sisson, a second touchdown toss in the game. So often you hear coaches talk about when you force a turnover, especially near midfield, yep. on the very next play, take a shot. Got to. And, and you know Sam Washington, with all of his defensive experience and prowess and his staff, recognized that might happen, but they exposed the defender in single coverage with Harris on the slant. And that was timed perfectly. Now we're going to have a review, I believe, as our leader of the band here today, referee Jerry Wellmaker, Heads over to the sideline. Joshua Harris, like so many great Furman Paladins before him from the Atlanta area, or in his case, Noonan, Georgia, just a little bit outside of the immediate Atlanta metro area. And so is our referee. I'm not sure what they're reviewing here, Pete. Uh, looks pretty clean to me. Unless there's a clock issue or something. Harris getting congratulations. Maybe Blackshear can bring the hat over and let him <laughs> wear it. Think about that. Back-to-back -back plays. Huge defensive play on the force turnover. The interception by Blackshear. And then Harris, a first career reception for the Paladins. And none bigger than when you take it to the house. 41 yards from Sissa. Yeah, and, and again, I think this is just talk. This shows you the maturity of this Furman team. Again, they had a rough spring year of 2021, um, had some time over the, in, in the off season, over the summer. Coach said they had a great camp. You know, everyone's healthy. Everyone is, is in a good place mentally. Um, and again, kind of getting into that normal feel of this is what we're supposed to be doing. 
you know, you got the crowd back. We, have, we saw some great tailgates earlier today. Um, you start to see this Furman team showcase their maturity and showcase um, that they're, re they're ready to compete for a championship this year. So, again, glad to see that we're back to normal. That's the main thing. At least, at least what what we can as normal as we can get. Has to be some type of after the play extracurricular. Something. And trying to emphasize taunting and sportsmanship control this year. NCAA and their points of if interest that the Football Rules Committee has laid out this year, targeting, taunting, uniform decorum, and sideline management. Wow. So Jacob Roberts for North Carolina A&T's defense, one of their starting lineup, uh, one of their starting linebackers. Wow. As best I could I could hear, we were told by Jerry Wellmaker that targeting was the call. And that would be the third defensive starter, I believe, that A&T would be without for the rest of the game. And I didn't see him head to the locker room yet. He's on the field right now coming off. And now he's got to come off and he's going to have to exit. So you see him right at the top of your screen. So Alex Fumba left earlier for targeting. And again, targeting is the action, not necessarily the resulting contact. If you and in this case, it, it, it was the action on the quarterback. I, yeah, I should have said not at necessarily at where the ball ends up, but it's it's the action. Right. It can be an action away from the ball is maybe the best way to state it. So it's oh, on the quarterback. Wow. Extra point, no good. Looked like someone got a hand on it. So Sisson, just as he got rid of the ball, taking the hit by Roberts, targeting the call. Three defensive starters exiting. Crossin due to a serious injury. Roberts and Fumba due to targeting. And North Carolina A&T down 16-3. to three. Summer last during the Ford Labor Day sales event. Now is still a great time to buy a Ford. Choose from our F-Series, America's best-selling truck for 44 years. And from the freshest lineup of SUVs in America. It's the Ford Labor Day sales event. Drive one, buy one today. Just announced. Now get 0% financing for 72 months on the 2021 Ford F-150. Learn more at buyfordnow.com and see your Carolina Ford dealer today. of BMW X vehicles available no matter what adventure lies around the corner. There's an X for that. Join BMW's Accelerate into Autumn and receive a $1,000 credit. Health. Suddenly that word seems more important these days as it's consumed all aspects of our lives and made our universes feel smaller than ever. But at Bon Secours, your health has always been our top priority, and we're staying as committed as always to personalizing the right care for you. Because whether here or from home, we believe your health care should always revolve around you. Bon Secours, primary care for the universe of you. Visit bonsecours.com slash primary care to connect with the provider today. Staying healthy has never been more important. Regular exercise can help both prevent and fight illnesses. At the YMCA of Greenville, we are ready to help you and your family build your strength, endurance, flexibility, confidence, and immunity with personal training, group exercise classes, swim lessons, youth sports, and more, all from a clean, safe, and fun space. Join the Y today to protect your health. Back at Paladin Stadium, Furman extends the lead to 16 to three. Extra point try by Bleak Road, partially blocked. Big day here today. We acknowledge it back in the first half when they had an on-field ceremony. Tommy Stevenson, Furman class of 1965, a huge booster in this program over the years, and the proprietor of what was known as Tommy's Ham House, just about a three or four mile drive down the road from the Furman campus. Mm. Well, he retired and closed his establishment back in the spring, but he had become an icon in the Greenville community for his eatery. It was a place where folks swapped stories over the years, always greeted by the gracious owner. 
honored here on Tommy Stevenson Day at Paladin Stadium. All kinds of folks of fame visiting his restaurant over the years. And again, many a conversation and memorable moment was had at Tommy's Ham House. And Tommy Stevenson, a great effort over the years representing Furman with Tommy's Ham House and a great honor for him today. I wish we, I wish we had a play to that right now, Pete. You know, I, I, I didn't even consider that, yeah, we are approaching <laughs> the dinner hour for you, or at least dinner hour part one for you. They apply the targeting penalty part on one. the... <laughs> kickoff and as a result it is pretty much a piece of cake to kick it far out of the end zone by Alex LePrevere. So let's take a look at that targeting again and again I don't think I set it up the right way when talking about it. It doesn't necessarily have to be on the ball. It's any point of contact and in this case the ejection will happen for a second player today for a &T, Jacob Roberts. What do you think? I mean it's hard to see at this angle. To me it looks like he's extending his arms. He doesn't hit with the head and it, it looks like his arms and hands hit. I mean, but again, I, I, I would need to see it the other angle, the possible see if the crown of the helmet actually hit. But again, I mean, I, I don't, uh, it's all about taking care of the safety of the players, and I get that. Um, but it's, it's going to be some, some work to try to make sure we get all on the same page moving forward. So A&T, their biggest deficit of the game growing this time they give it a Kayshawn Baker and Baker one of the better runs from the scrimmage today for the Aggies at this point A&T is going to have to have some sense of urgency you know they got to get some quick first downs they've got to get to the line of scrimmage get lined up get set um, because again you see here great play great first down play by Baker identifying everybody you know a hat on the hat and identifying the hole and then you know cutting it up field getting the first down um, but A&T's got to get going. They have to have a sense of urgency being down 13 here in the third quarter. First down carry for Baker. Play action. Cross Fowler. Nice. And he's got a man. And there's Banks. And that's the first time we've heard from Banks in a while. It's his fourth grab of the game. But his first since the opening quarter. An important weapon. And once again, a very experienced coaching staff at A&T. And they realize, guys, they've got to touch the football and yeah. how to adjust as this game goes on. Uh, absolutely. And, and, again, calling plays that you know your guys can execute at a high level. And, and you saw right there, rolling the quarterback out, giving him different levels, different options to make the throw, makes a good throw, creates a second and short. That's, that's how you keep a drive alive, and that's how you keep the uh, positive momentum. You see here, Fowler Oof. being able to pull it down. Again, he's 6'4", 240, big, <laughs> big guy, big frame. I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if we see more of that here in the second half. And Hugh Ryan at 6'1", 190, eventually brings him down, but it was like trying to pull down a free train in Fowler. Here, I mean, this just adds to the toolbox. There's more weapons that you have to worry about, and now you see, like I said, that sense of urgency, that anti offense is rolling down the field, slowly but surely picking up momentum. How can Furman step up and slow that down? Fowler once accounted for seven touchdowns in a high school game, trying to make a Big moment or two happen in his first collegiate start. And he's looking long for Hunt at the five. Blackshear takes him down near the two. They're warming up. They're warming up. I told you, you know, this A&T offense, they, all they need is a spark to kind of get going. And they're getting that momentum kind of slowly shifting back. Furman really needs to, you know, find a way to step up. Here, again, great protection by the big boys up front. Jalen's able to look down the field, and his man wins his matchup. As you see that sense of urgency, getting to the line of scrimmage quickly. Now they're huddling up, trying to make sure everyone's on the same page so they can cap the drive off with a touchdown. Actually mark him down at the forwards, first and goal. And the best drive so far for a &T. Martin back in there. Good job. Might have gotten a yard, but a good hard hit delivered by Great Cam tackle. Brinson. Great tackle by Cam Brinson right there. That's, that, that's, that's the way you wrap up. That's the way you keep your head up when you tackle it. Look at the bottom of your screen right here. Boom. Gets his hands right around the, um, the running back. Drives his feet through. Drives his hips through. Great job right there by Furman in defense. Travis Blackshear came up with a big turnover earlier in this quarter. And on the very next play, a strike run to Harris from Sisson. Room to run. Fowler Ooh. lowers a shoulder. Ball is loose. And the Furman Paladins with the big hit. And they force a second turnover here in quarter number three. Massive hit. 
Oh Braden Gilby. Give him the crown, right? He gets to wear the hat. <laughs> Man, what a collision, Pete. You figure it's a high percentage play. A 6'4 quarterback who weighs 235 oh. in the open field, but ooh, once again, Brinson nearby. Gilby comes up with the ball. Cam Brinson should get a share of being able to wear that over on the sideline. I mean, that, can we see the replay one more time? I mean, that, that hit for, that Brinson delivered right there, that's the hit that caused the fumble. Because the, the first hit, as you see here, I mean, and, and this is the right this is the right move. You have open green grass. You're, you're supposed to go ahead and try to get there, but watch your second hit. Boom. Again, the back side. And Blackshear made the initial, but it was the Brinson hit, the second hit. And a penalty marker down. It's going to go against A&T. Boy, that's just demoralizing. Yeah. Fowler. That's tough. Threw a high percentage pass on the earlier possession, picked off by Blackshear. And that time, he was a yard from pay dirt, and the ball knocked away. And second turnover here in the half for A&T. They were plus seven in that category in 2019, the last time they played a season, and had 13 turnovers for the year, but a couple here in the third quarter. Yeah, that's tough. I mean, and again, that, that really drains the, the energy out of the A&T team that literally drove the football down the field, did a great job, converted on some big plays. Um, and, and, and now you can make the argument, you know, if he would have thrown the ball, led his receiver more on that, uh, that previous big pass, uh, would he have scored and they not have been in that position to have to get under center and slow things down? So, uh, again, but tough, tough play. But let's give Furman some credit. Being able to bend but don't break, kind of that same mentality that we were seeing A&T's defense had. Furman was able to do that on that last possession and end up with a turnover. And a nice dump off into the flat. Paladins backed up. But a good job by Sisson on the swing out to Chase Abshire. And it'll go for a first down. Once again, making the stop was Reams, but not before Abshear on his first touch of the game picked up 13 yards. Ooh, and Abshear, wow, wow. cancels out the big play. Guilty of unsportsmanlike conduct. That'll back him up. And you don't want to have that. that, that that's the kind of stuff that you don't want to have. Um, when, if you're firm and you just had a huge play, just got a big turnover. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, you can't do that. You got to be careful doing that on certain, certain sidelines. You know, some people don't. They don't play with that, Pete. <laughs> he had to be excited again. He hadn't been a factor in the game at all today. And on his first touch, positive play. But penalty against the Paladins. Backs him up to the 10-yard line oh. where it's first and 10. And once again, we hear whistles. That was the sixth penalty against Furman. Five so far against a and I'm really surprised to see this by Furman, Pete, to be quite honest. I mean, this is a, a, a Furman team that, you know, they're they're not a young team. Here. They have mature players, um, and they have a culture here where they have a standard of not having these type of silly penalties, which are, are really a, a buzz kill for as you're trying to drive, um, you know, and, and really secure a win. Open room. And looked like Devin Abrams going to make even more out of that than he eventually does, but he gets some of the yards back. And going to bring up second down and a reasonable seven. Look at the hole for Abrams. Huge hole. Again, that offensive line, Coach Hendricks talked about, was probably the healthiest it's been in quite some time. And he's got at least, you know, eight, seven, eight guys that he can rotate in and out. And, and a lot of those guys are going to play. Uh, so when you're able to keep those guys fresh and healthy, you're going to see a lot of big open uh, holes like that at the middle. Miller, the tight end, running away from defenders. One man to beat inside the 30. Wow. And Ryan Miller, end to end. Tight ends aren't supposed to have that kind of speed. Hey, but he's different. He's hybrid, man. Great job by the tight end right there, getting behind the offense. Let's give credit where credit's due. Hamp did a great job understanding the read, making the right 
quick throw, and then the tight end put on the burners and really showcased that speed there. Great job by Furman being able to really stretch this lead now here in the third quarter. Second time in the quarter that Furman forces a turnover and turns it into a touchdown. Bleak Road able to get that one through the uprights. Those two connected on a 73-yard score in the spring. Here in the opener in the fall, 87 yards, the tight end, his first touchdown here in this phase of the 21 campaign. What do you see? A multifaceted stone of remarkable strength, formed under intense pressure to shine brighter than all the rest. Hard edges, clean lines, with a fire inside. When you look at a diamond, what do you see? Ingalls, proud sponsor of Furman Athletics. You fired up the grill for one hot dog? Seriously? Hot dogs, better with Pepsi. BMW 330e, X330e, and X545e. The BMW Electrified Fleet. Join BMW's Accelerate into Autumn and receive a $1,000 credit. A big bow box says a lot about a person. Like, they have a mighty hunger, a powerful thirst, and great taste when it comes to pro football teams. Game day and beyond, rep your Carolina Panthers with an official team big bow box. Health. Suddenly that word seems more important these days as it's consumed all aspects of our lives and made our universes feel smaller than ever. But at Bon Secours, your health has always been our top priority and we're staying as committed as always to personalizing the right care for you. Because whether here or from home, we believe your health care should always revolve around you. Bon Secours, primary care for the universe of you. Visit bonsecours.com slash primary care to connect with the provider. As it turns out, indeed, the longest career completion for Hamp Sisson, 87 yards to his tight end, Ryan Miller, makes it a 23-3 game. Been a real good day so far for the Furman offense. They've outgained A&T 387 to 157. Had a solid first half, but they've been efficient in the third quarter. And keep in mind, two turnovers by A&T have led to the two touchdowns that have extended a 10-3 halftime advantage on the return and some good room to run for Banks and he's out near midfield before he's finally tripped up. Well if you're if you're a Furman fan at home you've got to be feeling really good about what you're seeing from your offense you know you want to see an offensive line that can create holes you want to see a backfield and a slew of backs that can all tote the mail and also are versatile enough to be able to catch the ball out of the backfield and you want to see a quarterback that's the Decisive. I think Hamp has done a great job as far as understanding his reads, understanding where he wants to go with the football, and executing at a high level and making the right throws. And, and, and again, high production from this Furman offense has led to 23 points so far in this game. And if you're a Furman fan at home, you've got to feel confident seeing that against a really good traditional a and team as Furman gets ready to go into conference play soon. Martin showing a burst of speed and some power at the end. Get inside of the 40. Kickoff return by Banks, 47 yards. Got it out to the 47 in that time. Nice carry by one of the top running backs in the Big South and in all of FCS. Now, one thing, Pete, that I think Coach Hendricks can, will, will agree with is Furman has to be sure to understand how to close games out. You got a big lead, you got a 20 point lead here you know, midway through the third quarter. How do we finish the game strong? Not giving momentum back to the other team. Pressure comes, Fowler able to get away from one and at least make something out of nothing. But being able to finish the game when you have a big lead, I think that's really important that Coach Hendrick is, is trying to preach to his team right now here as they get ready to close up um, the third quarter here. Finish the game strong because you're gonna need to do that as you get deep into conference play. Jalen Fowler doing well. 
blitz was coming. Well, he's he's a, he's a big guy. I mean, <laughs> when you when you get home against a big quarterback like that, you've got to really hit him low. You got to game tackle him. You got to find ways to really get him down on the ground quickly because he's a big, strong kid, um, and he can break away from those arm tackles. Evan DiMaggio got the hand on Fowler, but he turned into a two-yard play. That might have been a miscommunication unless Martin was set up to block for Fowler, who lunges ahead and brings up third and short. Paladins have. Out past the Aggies, 311 to 104. Furman has rushed to 76 yards, but again, they knew what a wall they were going to run into in this ANT defense, so they've attacked him differently. As for the defense, well, they've been able to contain Martin and Fowler in this offense. You saw the 14 yard carry by Martin, the running back, moments ago, but just 10 attempts for 33 yards so far. Third down upcoming, ANT one of seven so far this afternoon. And that'll Help that total. Little slant completion. Sterling Burkhalter, his first career reception for the Cincinnati native. Great job right there by Jalen, understanding he read the defense. He read the defense. I mean, he looked straight to where he was throwing the football. He still needs to work on that. Remember, he did that earlier, but he's looking down this guy. He sees what the defense is giving him, throws the ball to the right, uh, his, his right, the, the correct weapon there. Uh, but again, he's got to work on not just staring down his receivers because a good defense, such as we've seen today, they'll pick him off every time. Fowler and able to get it to Ooh. his safety valve, Ooh. Baker, and Baker makes something happen after the initial hit. Flag, yep. And then a flag looks like it's going to add some yards to that. So once again, North Carolina A&T is going to be in the neighborhood or maybe inside of the Furman five-yard line. Again, big quarterback. You got to try to gain tackle to get him down, but this is poor tackling. Arm tackling, guys not lo guys loafing. You can't do that. You know, that's that's not what well, that's not the standard that Coach Clay Hendricks has, has established here. Parker Stokes, the guilty party for Furman. The key, the uh, best defense I've seen are defenses that gain tackle. Defenses that when you see when one guy gets there, he slows and holds the guy up, and you have a slew of guys coming around and gain tackling, getting him on the ground. You see plays like that, arm tackling, guys just kind of loafing to the pile, things like that. You can't have that and expect to have a championship caliber defense. Based on how physical we've seen Fowler able to stay on his feet, throw the ball with a man on his back. Dare I compare him to another number one in the Carolinas just a few years ago? At that time, <laughs> Baker is nowhere to run. And there was Stokes, among others, making amends for Furman. That's how you tackle. That's how you get a guy on the ground. You gang tackle him. You, you, if one guy gets there, he has to be able to rely that his other 10 brothers are going to get there and clean up and get the guy on the ground, not just stand around and loaf around. That's not the standard here at Furman. And again, that's how you play good defense. And that's how you, that's what Coach Clay Hendricks is trying to instill, finishing the game, finishing the drive, and getting off of the field. Jeremiah Jackson leading the surge that time. I inadvertently said Stokes. Jackson on the stop, whistles, and the flag thrown in on a second and goal from the 12. And A&T will be pushed back a little bit further. On their sixth penalty of the game, Furman, eight penalties for 74 yards so far this afternoon as we wind down here in the third quarter. You see the penalty yard situation. And you kind of expect that. I mean, first game, first game in over two years for A&T, you know, you're going to have some penalties in the first game. But again, it's, it's all about mitigating that as the season goes on. Uh, and getting more comfortable with the flow of the game. Second down and the hard hit after the catch. As Martin was met by Hugh Ryan, sophomore out of Irmo, played at the great Dutch Fork High School. And it'll bring up a third down and goal all the way out at the 16 yard line. Dutch Fork came up to the upstate last night, correct? Able to uh, continue an unbeaten streak that's now 52 in a row and extend their winning streak to 26. Third and goal. We saw A&T convert on third down moments ago. Big play for Fowler. 
and the Aggies. And Hunt in traffic, Whoa. leaps, touchdown. Wow. Ivan Yates did everything he could to everything. get a hand on that, but zipped in there from Fowler to Hunt. First touchdown of the season for a and and it's a 16-yarder, and Jalen Fowler may feel like the world has been lifted off his shoulders to break through. Great job by the O-line picking up the blitz. And again, Jalen surveying the land, being able to see where all of his weapons are and finding who's winning their matchup and then throwing a, a, a ball on a tight rope to his guy to get into the end zone. Great effort by him of extending and knowing where he was at on the field that he had to extend a little extra to get the touchdown. Great drive by this A&T offense. Uh, and hopefully they can try to continue to build on this as the game. Still a lot of football left. A lot of football left, only down by 13. Andrew Brown's extra point try. Hunt is a big addition to this offense. He missed most of 2019 due to injury for the Aggies. Had a touchdown catch in the 19 season. Now he's got one in the opener in 2021. Big number 81 for North Carolina A&T. And for Fowler, who had three touchdown tosses a couple of seasons ago, able to take his team all the way from start to finish on an offensive series with six points and it's a 23-10 game. It was 10-7 Furman at the half. An eight play, 53 yard scoring drive in four minutes, 58 seconds. Great drive. North Carolina A&T able to answer and they've been their own worst enemy because the interception by Blackshear, which was followed by the quick scoring strike for Furman, and the fumble by Fowler right near the goal line led to the eventual 87-yard connection from Sisson to Miller, the tight end. And again, if you're Furman right now, you gotta, you got to find a way to un understand how you're going to take adversity. You know, how are you going to take the fact that, okay, a went down, they put a nice drive together, they put points on the board. But we've had a, a great first half. We've had a, a pretty strong third quarter so far. How do we bounce back from that? Great test for this Furman program. Let's see what they do when they get the football back here. And Dewan Bell, another opportunity on a return for Furman. This time stopped just beyond the 20-yard line. So the Bowden's going back to work. First time in three series, they'll get the ball with a turnover not leading to that. I got a feeling we're going to see a big dose of, of Mr. Wynn and, and the tailbacks this, uh, this particular drive. You know, it's funny, before that previous series in the past to Miller, I was wondering if, as he makes another catch, there's a very reliable tight end and he'll be wrestled out of bounds but he had remember in the opening half gone off the field was being attended to looked like he'd taken a hard hit maybe had some pain in his shoulder area but he indeed uh, did return to action in a big way yeah he, he definitely has and again he's one of these impact players you see here the RPO game again uh, short you know easy quick safe pass um, but when you have the athletes like they have at Furman uh, that short little pass that we've seen can go a long way and actually turn into a, a big play in the touchdowns. Miller and Bell, four catches apiece for the Paladins to lead the way in that category. A little shuffle step by win, but right there is Amir McNeil, and it'll bring up third down. Uh-oh. And now once again, pushing and shoving and another penalty marker thrown in. Let's see if this is going to be called against either team. McNeil heading over to the sidelines. McNeil picking up a first unsportsmanlike. The junior out of Laurenburg, North Carolina, played at Scotland County High. And that turns out to be a big moment as the Ball moves out to the 39-yard line. If you're A&T with under two minutes to go in the third quarter, certainly hoping to 
Make the momentum turn in your direction, having just cut it to a 13-point deficit. Sisson firing for DeLuca. Coach is upset. He just threw, I think he threw his water bottle down on the, on the sideline. I mean, again, this Furman, this Furman offense has so many different weapons. As you see right here, I mean, you, you have to respect the run game. You have to respect the RPO. And then sometimes Hamp just sits back and he can just read the defense and just makes the right throw. 18 yards, Hamp Sisson working on a really good day. 20 of 31, 331 yards so far, and of course, three touchdown tosses. The three Paladins touchdowns all coming by way of the pass. Little spin, then a crawl for Wynn down to the 40. And again, uh, this, this Furman offense, they attack you so many different ways. They can run the ball up the middle. They can, they can bounce it on the outside. Then they can throw in the RPO game. Then they can, you know, they, they do so many little things that as defense, it makes it really hard to prepare for. And when they have the guys, they have depth now, uh, when they can rotate guys a lot up front, this Furman offense can be very deadly um, here in the SoCon. Devin Abrams. And that'll be another first down. Sisson's already blown away his best passing day in the spring when he threw for 277 against Samford. He's closing in on 350. And he looks so comfortable with it, Pete. He just, he has a, like a, a new swagger about him that we, I didn't really see that this spring, but now he just seems like having that, having that uh, summer, having that live film um, to review from the spring, he just has a different swagger about himself and he's carrying it well here in, in the first game of the fall season. And that 10 yard connection to Abrams will be our final play of quarter number three, a ham Sisson. He and the Furman Paladins collectively with some swagger coming out of the halftime locker room. They built on their lead. They'll take a 13-point advantage of the fourth quarter on our Ingalls SoCon Game of the Week. The leap of faith. Some hesitate, but not you. You don't ask what if. You embrace what's next with open arms. You don't question your decision. You double down. Because you know the thrill is worth it. Introducing the 2022 Telluride Nightfall Edition. Twisted Tea is a refreshing hard iced tea made with real brewed tea. Keep it twisted. Fourth quarter here in Greenville and the first half of our Ingalls SOCON Game of the Week doubleheader coming up at 6 p.m. on many of these same stations. Western Carolina, Eastern Kentucky do battle to start out the Kerwin Bell era in Cullowee, North Carolina. Should be a good game. Tune in for that. Scott Kurzwanski and Jay Sonhalter have the call of that battle. And then next Saturday, Jared and I are in the low country. Mm. Our Ingalls SOCON Game of the Week has a backyard battle. The Citadel Bulldogs against the Buccaneers of Charleston Southern. The Citadel and Charleston Southern meet again. A rivalry on the line next Saturday, 2 p.m. on many of these same stations. I love Charleston, Pete. One of my favorite places to go. Some good eating down there. Oh! Sisson drops it and... Paladins will keep possession. Hey, we got a double header today. So, you know, once we wrap up here, if you're watching the game at home, run down to your local Ingles, get some, you know, some, some chips, some barbecue, get some of that ice cream that they got in the ice cream section, and uh, come on back and watch the second, the second game of the week. Kendall Thomas able to fall on it. We've seen today the Introduction of the running back heavily into the passing game for Ham Sisson, working on a career high already with 341 yards, actually now 307 mm. for the Paladins on a second down and 14 carry for Furman. And Devin Abrams brings up a third down and nine, but Ham Sisson, 341 career yards. By the way, 87 of them on that touchdown toss to the tight end Miller, the fourth longest in Paladins history, although really? and they were in, in, in building what they've done, really going back into the 70s when Art Baker first arrived here and all the greatness that's followed as there's an A&T player down. I would have thought their top five pass plays were all of 90 yards or more with the great quarterbacks they've had here and some really fine receivers. But I mean, they've had some great teams. You know, I know some of the, 
teams from like that, those national championship teams and, and finalists, you know, Robert Little, um, you know, you mentioned some of the guys from, from back in those days. I mean, they've had some great players here um, over here in Furman. Had a quarterback, David Whitehurst, from back in the 70s go yep. on and play in the NFL. Yep. And another quarterback play in the NFL who was pretty good, the late Sam Weich. Dakota Dozier, offensive lineman, I played against him. He was from still Brooklyn. Still in the league. Still in the league. Uh, played at, down there at Brooklyn KC, one of the top linemen um, in South Carolina. Played here at Furman. Uh, Furman, they, they have produced people and they have produced some good teams over the years. So I'm surprised. 80, 83 yards, huh? Yeah. Wow. So 87. 87, 87 yards. Of course, Brian Bratton, one of the fine wide receivers in program history. Now their wide receivers coach passing game coordinator. I think he should take a little bit of credit for the tight end. Miller making that play. Third down for the Paladins so far today. 5 of 11. Sisson over the middle. Intended for Thomas. So fourth down. You're in the neighborhood of your opponent's 30-yard line and Bleak Road will come out. He's their punter. He's also their kicker. He's one for two today on field goal tries. Made it from 41 and missed one from 40. And this will be an attempt. of about 47 yards, which would match his long from the spring that he had up at ETSU. Out of the hold of Luke Bynum, under local playing oh. for this Furman team. Kick low, has the distance, and it's good. Big so kick. Bleak Road now two of three, and he extends the lead to 26 to 10 with a 47-yarder matching his best from the spring. Paladins try and open with a win. They lead North Carolina A&T here in the fourth. The fresh hotness is back in Pizza Hut, baby. Detroit-style pizza with the cheese all the way to the crispy edges. Layered with 80, no they didn't, 80 pepperonis and a savory sauce poured right on top. Go ahead, get yourself some Detroit style. I think I'll send Detroit a thank you card. Dear Detroit, thank you. The Detroit style pizza. Create your own or pick from three signature recipes. No one out pizzas the hut. Today, business is a balancing act. You want your data to be protected and secured. And your customers want seamless and easy. With IBM, you can do both. Your company can monitor threats across your clouds, address all those regulations, and still create all new experiences. Trustworthy AI-powered security. That's why so many businesses work with IBM. Paladins with three scores here in the second half. Couple of touchdowns and the Bleak Road 47-yard field goal to build a 26-10 lead on the Aggies of North Carolina A&T. And along with Jared Singleton, Pete Yannity with you back at Paladin Stadium here in Greenville. Stadium that has been around now for roughly 40 years. They have put a new carpet down. And hence the beautiful facility over the years and a beautiful setting on this wonderful Furman campus. Banks on the return. So A&T Still a two-possession game to the max. They did show some spark in their last series. Jalen Fowler has looked very confident, quite frankly, throughout this game. Sam Washington calls him his guy, and now he's going to rely on his quarterback getting his first collegiate start to create some fourth-quarter magic. Well, not only that, Pete. I mean, he's got to have a sense of urgency. He's got to take leadership. You know, Coach Washington talked about that uh, Jalen has really – earn that leadership and taking on that quarterback role and, and, and the guys follow him. So, um, you know, if he shows a sense of urgency, if he, if he showcases that he's, he cares, I think the guys will follow. So it'll be interesting to see how he comes out. He comes out slinging it. And Boom. Hunt! Whoa. He has been a big target today, and there he goes! <laughs> Talking about sense of urgency, the, you see the arm strength, you see the accuracy. That's what Coach Washington and this a and fan base has been waiting to see all day. Fantastic job, offensive line, creates a good solid pocket. And again, his man wins his matchup. I mean, there's just too much speed, too much athleticism for him. And touchdown. 74 yards, wow. And the, and the Aggies are right back in it. We got ourselves a ball. I told you, a lot of football left. A lot of football left, but again, what did I say before? 
Coach, Coach Hendricks wants to find ways to teach us guys they've got to close games out. Just because you have a big lead, no lead is safe. You've got to close the game out. The lone touchdown Hunt had in an injury-plagued 2019 campaign. As it looked like the Aggies had set up to go for two. I actually looked away for a moment, and now we've got whistles. And a delay of game. It was 43 yards, so that's in all likelihood his career high. And in terms of quick strike ability, Fowler is showing just that. So the Aggies trailing here by 10. You go for two and you keep yourself within a one possession. So it makes sense at this stage of the game. 13 24 to go. Fowler firing. Banks oh. got it. Wow. It's an eight point game. And that's the accuracy that, we, that I talked about. Being, I mean, that's a tough throw, Pete. Very tough throw. And Jalen made that throw look effortless. We got ourselves a ball game right here, Pete. I tell you right here, look, look, as you see right here, being able to see the uh, defense, understanding where his guy is, and just the nice touch in the corner of the end zone. Great job. Winding windows are flying off the Today, shelves. your customers want it all. Yeah! You have to deal with higher expectations and you have to lower wait times. Last one. With IBM, you can do both. Your business can unify apps and data across your clouds. So you can address supply chain issues in real time before they impact your bottom line. Predicting and managing operational issues. That's why so many businesses work with IBM. AFLAC policyholders have been paid $37 billion directly. That's a lot of money. Did somebody say money? Get help with expenses health insurance doesn't cover. AFLAC is ready for prime time. AFLAC is an official sponsor of ESPN College Game Day. Sam Washington sees his North Carolina A&T Aggies pull within a one-possession game. Each of these teams has a TD toss of 74 yards or more each has been able to put together a one-play scoring drive in the second half, and Jalen Fowler making them proud in Inman, South Carolina, not only with his long strikes, but a really nice precision pass and a two-point conversion to Corey Banks. Another return for the Paladins' bell. That time, not a whole lot happening. He stopped shy of the 20. So, and as you see here, Pete, you look at the sideline of Furman compared to the sideline of a and you slowly but surely seeing that momentum shift more and more to the A&T sideline. Big play, getting back into this ball game. Fourth quarter, defense is fired up. This defense has already been talented. They've already showcased that they've been able to bend but not break. Uh, they've given up a few big plays, but again, that's expected uh, with, with every game. But now they have the momentum. Now they have the, the fire. How does Hamp Simpson in, in this uh, Furman offense, how do they handle that adversity, and how can they find a way to close this game? Win! Ooh. One of the experienced linebackers on this team is Joseph Stuckey. He was second on their squad at 19 with 70 stops. Look, this sideline to sideline is, is just... <laughs> This a and defense is just too quick for it. They're just too quick, they're too athletic. As you see right here, I mean, the, the great job of understanding technique, leveraging, keeping his outside arm free, and then closing in on the ball carrier, making a tackle. As now Furman, I think, looks like they have another guy down, one of the, one of the offensive linemen. Um, but again, now sets up second and 15, and you got a, a, a backup offensive lineman coming in. Wouldn't be surprised if you start seeing a and attack wherever that replacement O-lineman comes in at. So, again, Furman's got their hands full right now. How do they find a way to finish and close off the game? You hope it's a cramping issue as North Carolina A&T gathers over on their sideline. Likewise, for the Paladins' offense across the way, A&T ranked as high as number 24 in the preseason FCS polls. It gives you an idea of the quality of depth in their new conference, the Big South. They're picked third behind... The reigning champion Monmouth and Kennesaw State. And on our network of Next Star stations beginning in mid-September, we'll have a Big South game of the week to go along with a SoCon game of the week, all presented by Ingalls and popping up 
Anderson Tomlin, an all SoCon performer. So check your local listings for not only an Ingalls SoCon game of the week, but a Ingalls Big South game of the week as well. And that should be a great battle in that league this season, just as the Southern Conference expects to have another competitive season on the gridiron. Loss of five on the dump off to win. This mm -mm. time on the Ooh. pitch and not a whole lot of room for him. And you see, that, that, that's the difference. I talked about it earlier with Furman. If you got a game tackle. And again, this Aggie defense, they do a great job of running sideline to sideline. And when you see one, you know more are coming. And they're going to come with, bat, with, a, <laughs> with a bad attitude. And they, they're, they're showcasing that. Now you've got a third and 14. You can pin your ears back. You kind of can't expect them to throw the ball here. Um, and again, if you're you're Furman, you got to find a way to convert. Just 31 yards and 11 carries for Wynn, who had three 100-yard-plus games rushing in the spring. Miller deflected, intercepted. First turnover of the game by the Paladins. Wow. And North Carolina A&T is set up just fine. Wow. Right place, right time, and the interception by the Aggies, Taekwon King. And we got a guy down. It's like one of the D linemen that rolled up on towards the end of the pile. But again, look, great job, great position. Not a bad throw, but again, when that ball gets tipped like that, it's anyone's ball. You see it towards the bottom of your screen. You'll see a guy kind of get rolled up on. Looks like number 92. Uh, looks like it might be an ankle or a lower leg. But again, great job by this Aggie defense coming up huge. Again, you knew they were going to throw the football third and 14. <laughs> they've got to throw it and doesn't come down with the catch. Tip ball and guys running towards the ball creates an opportunity for it to get an interception. Coach Nate Woody at Wofford used to always talk about that. When the ball's tipped, that's anyone's ball. But if you run towards the football, you have an opportunity to be there for an, uh, you know, an interception or a fumble. They forced 20 turnovers in 2019, did North Carolina A&T. And the interception by King will set them up at the 14-yard line. Meanwhile, they continue to attend to the player down. Of course, earlier in the game, we saw one of their starting defensive backs suffer a very, what appeared to be a very serious injury, D.J. Crossin. They had to bring the ambulance on the field, and they were attending to his neck area after he made contact with one of his teammates, Amir Neal, as each was defending a pass play. Yeah, I, I was going to say, Kind of what we talked about earlier, striking it while it's hot. If I'm, if I'm a and I'm coming back out on the field. I'm rolling the pocket to the right. I'm setting up different levels. I have a guy in the flat. I have a guy in the back of the end zone. I have a guy trailing in the middle. And I'm letting Jalen, who's, who's got a lot of momentum right now, I'm letting him see what the defense is giving him and make a play. That's the play call that I'm personally looking at. But we'll see what Coach Washington and his staff come up with. But again, strike it while it's hot. Your team is juiced. You just had a big turnover. Let's go for the kill shot right now. Trey Love helped off the field, the injured North Carolina A&T defensive lineman. And on the run back, he was trying to help block, and you see in the yeah. middle of your screen. So he'll be attended to over the bench. So Jalen Fowler and the Aggies in the red zone. Play action over the middle. Good job once again by Brinson, denying the opportunity for Quinzel Lockhart. Might have a pass interference here. Or it could be on the offense. Interesting call, big call. They did not have great success a couple of years ago, as it is pass interference on the Aggies. But when you got a quarterback with an arm like Jalen, um, he can make that up for you. And again, some, sometimes when you get backed up like that, it kind of gives you more room to operate. True. So Pretty obvious, though. You notice how Lockhart, the intended receiver, looked like a defensive lineman throwing <laughs> a running back trying to block him out of the way. So first and goal, back at the 29. Another occasion in this game where North Carolina A&T has had a down-and-goal situation with Plenty of yards between them and the goal line. Fowler. 
Tough to take down in the open field. Gets to the 20. And that's a smart play. He understands it's first and 25. He doesn't have to get it all back in one play. Chip away at it. Put yourself in a manageable position where if you can't get a touchdown, you can get a field goal. Um, and again, understand, take what the defense gives you. That's his mindset. He's not going to force anything that's not there. Pull it down. You're a big quarterback. You can take a couple hits and, uh, you know, live to see another day. Penalty moments ago, the ninth on A&T. Furman has been penalized eight times in the game. Second and goal just outside of the 20. Martin hit initially. Taken down. He probably would want to pull that next time. Busting in there for the Paladins, Cameron Coleman, Jr. out of Elizabethton, Tennessee. And again, big third down right here. Okay, you take a sack, it might put you out of field goal range. So you, you can't take a sack, but you want to get some kind of positive yards in case you don't get the first down where you can get a field goal. Probably going to see a zone defense here. So again, find your check down if you don't have anything deep. Three of nine on third downs over the middle and well beyond the intended target. Nice job by the Furman defense. Giving up a lot, but again, bending but not breaking. Forcing a t not to get the touchdown, but have to settle for a field goal. So we'll again see Andrew Brown. He hit a 47-yarder in the opening half, his first collegiate attempt. Interestingly, competing against Furman is this Andrew Brown out of Lexington, North Carolina, the Paladins basketball team a few years ago to player named Andrew Brown. He wore the number five. Mm. Low kick, a wobbler, and no good. He pulled it to the left. On that attempt of 38 yards. Huge Each place man. kicker one of two in the ball game. We'll see if either miss is a factor as we go down the stretch here. Still plenty of time to go. 10-34 remains in our fourth quarter. Our score remains 26 to 18 in favor of Furman. Yeah, Furman, great job by the defense being able to get off the field and not giving up any points. But again, Coach Hendricks cannot be that happy with the fact that he's allowing, his team is allowing a t to slowly creep back into this game. He's probably preaching right there in that huddle before they took the field. Finish the game. Get some first downs. Put a drive together. Let's finish the game and showcase that we're a mature team. We're a team that's ready to, you know, that can face some adversity, but we can bounce back and punch the team back in the mouth if we get hit in the mouth. Furman offense has been efficient, to say the least, but they are in a dogfight, and that batted down. Boy, that could have been a second straight pick thrown by Sisson, reaching up and getting his hands on it. Stephen Davis, Jr., Transfer to this North Carolina A&T program out of Columbia, South Carolina. His dad was a phenomenal player in the Palmetto State as well as at Auburn and then in the NFL with the Redskins and the Panthers. Second down and 10. Mm. Now they're hard hitting the interior. Boy, <laughs> pads have been popping. You can tell these yeah. teams, especially A&T, Wanted to hit somebody else. Well, we talked about that with uh, Coach Washington this uh, uh, this week in, in our call with him. You know, he's like, look, our guys are so excited. We, we could play anybody, anywhere, as long as it's not ourselves. We're just looking forward to playing someone. So, yeah, they're, they're definitely hitting down there. I'm glad I'm up here with you, Pete. Two yards for winning the carry. I'm glad you're up here with me, too. <laughs> third down and eight. Paladin so far, 5 of 13 on third downs. A little out pattern and the connection to Harris with a big touchdown reception. That's his second career catch, and it moves the chains at a very important time of the game. Very important time, and that's exactly what Coach Clay Hendricks is looking for. Let's put a drive together. Let's get a couple first downs. Let's try to finish this drive with a touchdown. Let's finish the game. And, again, that's the kind of momentum and kind of attitude that you're going to have to have if you're Furman in order to compete and win a SoCon championship. Pretty good start to his Furman career for the receiver, Joshua Harris. Two catches for 50 yards and a touchdown. Not a bad day at the office, right? First and 10 at the 32. Going to rely on the run game and still throw it around if you're Furman. And Harris, a great job with Reams right on his back. And Reams, again, almost had it. I mean, he was a split second late. Probably could have picked that one off. But again, great job by the Furman receiver being able to have strong hands. 
You know, we saw a play last night, I forgot what game it was, where the receiver, the North Carolina game, receiver didn't have strong hands and allowed the defender to steal the ball away from him. When you get your hands on the football, all the receivers at home, you got to squeeze it, bring it to your chest, and be strong with it. Play action. Sisson near sideline. Oh. Harris, did he get a foot in? No, he was out. Really nice coverage by Miles Simon for A&T. You know, I'm surprised to see Furman throwing the ball so much in the fourth quarter with the lead and having it being second and short. Uh, would think they would be utilizing all the good tailbacks that they have in that physical offensive line um, to really try to get, get this game over quickly. But, but still, a lot of the guys who were one of the best run defenses in the country were A&T two years ago there, there. So you yeah. figure you, you attack where the resistance is the least. Another third down. This one, third and one. And oh, the ball dropped is it. dropped on the handoff to Roberto. Let's see. There's no Aggies way they indicating as if they have it. There's no way they turn it over twice. And the celebration wow. on for a and wow. A second forced turnover here in the fourth quarter after they had two critical turnovers themselves <laughs> in the third. Pete, you just can't do it. You just can't do it. I think, you know, Furman's trying to get too cute, you know, with throwing the ball on, on the second down. Now they were, you know, having to run the football on third and short and then fumbling the football. You've got to be able to finish football games. And now if you're a and you come back on the field, what do you do? You had one play last time for a touchdown. I wouldn't be surprised to see the same thing this time. Where's the matchup? Understand what the defense is giving you and attack it. Top of your screen. Weapons for Fowler. Once again, they get the ball back, trailing by just eight. He'll hand it off to the reliable Martin, looking for a hole, lowers his shoulder. It'll be second down. This is a big drive, because, I mean, I don't know how many times A&T might get the ball this close in, in uh, plus territory. You don't know how many times you're going to get the ball back in general. I mean, there's eight minutes left in the game, and the clock is ticking. So A&T has to get production out of this drive. And a one of the play for Martin. 12 carries, 33 yards. There it goes. The handoff, looking deep. Flag. Yeah. Man. Too much contact that time for the Paladins' Ivan Yates. Got to be a load trying to defend Corey Banks, the fine receiver out of Tyrone, Georgia. Now that creates a whole new set of downs, and you can go back to running the football. Each but again, team now with nine penalties again so far. Yeah, and again. In the first game, you, you expect to see a lot of penalties, things like that. But again, these, these are two programs that are well coached, uh, and that, that will be addressed. I, I'd be very surprised if, if both of these teams have nine penalties in week two. Ball place of the 24 of Furman. Paladins gave it up inside their own 20 on the previous a and possession. They were able to deny any points as the Aggies had to settle for a field goal try out of Brown. First and 10. This time, the backup to Martin Baker wiggles his way for a couple of yards. That looked a whole he's, lot more like it had potential for excitement at the start, though. He's a shifty little guy. I mean, he's a very quick back. And again, you've got to wrap guys like that up and get them on the ground quickly. You can't allow them to, you can't just arm tackle them because, uh, again, they're going to make you miss and they can really hit it uh, and take, the, take it the distance. So, again, great job by the Furman defense of only allowing him to get one yard. Travis Blackshear, another big play in the second half. He had an interception earlier that set up a touchdown. Second down nine. Still plenty of time to go, but, yeah, you do want to, Make something happen here points-wise if you're A&T. Oh. That time, Banks unable to corral it, had a defender closing. That was tough. Brinson was nearby once again. Maybe he heard his footsteps. Yeah, he heard footsteps for sure. And, he, and again, when you're a receiver, you got to bring the ball in first. Can't, can't worry so much about, you know, the run after the catch. You got to make sure you catch the football first. And again, sometimes those wide receivers, uh, they start thinking about the, the celebration before they actually think about the reception. Three of ten on third downs for a &T this afternoon. Big third down right here.
Say Fowler, touch pass, Baker, broken up, Gilby. I think if he could do that one over, he would, he would tuck it and run. He had the first down if he would have just tuck it and run. He's 6'5", 6'4", 240. Um, there was no one clearly in front of him. I, I mean, I can see what the thought process was there, trying to maybe get a P.I., but if you can get the guarantee first down, I would try to keep the, keep the drive alive. Brown made one from 47 in the opening half. The Lexington, North Carolina native missing earlier in this quarter from 38 yards away. This is a try of just beyond 40 yards. Bad snap. Kick is blocked. Scramble for the ball. That's Paladins tough. will get it back. And once again, A&T unable to seize the opportunity after forcing a turnover. That's tough. That's tough for A&T. I mean, you get two turnovers and, you know, <laughs> two opportunities, and you get uh, a missed field goal and a blocked field goal. Great job by Furman, though. You know, bend but don't break. But again, uh, Coach Hendricks can't be pleased with the fact that it's, it's taking, a, you know, a botched field goal and a missed field goal to continue to lead. He would rather not turn the football over. He would rather have an offense that can put together a long drive, a four or five minute drive, milk the clock, end with a touchdown or a field goal, and be able to finish the game that way. Really surprised the holder and their backup quarterback, Kingsley Afidi didn't yell fire and just try to create a play because it was clearly yeah. not a situation where he was going to be able to set the ball for his kicker. His win picks up three on a first down carry. We saw the ball thrown quite a bit on the previous possession for the Paladins. I've got to think they're now in clock kill mode. And yeah. You're going to see a steady diet of win and Abrams among others. And it should have been that way the last drive. It should have been that way, you know, the whole thing. Although it was a fumble, the handoff to Roberto on a yeah. third down and short conversion that led to that second turnover. And this time, room to run for Devin Wynn across midfield. Stay in bounds. Good. See, His best carry of the day and a very smart play by a veteran. Foot, exactly. You said it, Pete. A veteran that understands, has good football awareness, understanding the situation, you know, not going out of bounds, seeing green grass and getting there. And again, that that is what it's all about. That's what Coach Clay Hendricks wants to see. He wants to see his guys convert, continue to get first downs, continue to milk the clock, now you force a t to start having to burn some of those timeouts. Um, and, you know, that's what you have to do to close out games. Best run of the day, 24 yards. Win now, 60 yards on 14 touches. They go to the other Devin, and James able to break some tackles before he's hit hard at the end of the run. And that's a good first down play. Good first down play. Uh, getting positive yards. I think we got a couple, couple banged up guys. And the Paladin offensive lineman again down. That might be Tomlin once again. We saw him cramp up earlier. I wonder, but he, I wonder if Tomlin's the guy that got hit. That's in the actually back. not Tomlin. No, instead it's yeah. Wyatt Hughes. He's got. You see them pushing on those toes, trying to get that muscle flexed out a little bit. It's nothing but a cramp. Hughes making his first career start at a guard today out of Chattanooga's McCallie School. I like that number six two. That was my favorite number when I played, Pete. And I thought it was Hughes. Might have actually been Evan Jumper, and it was Jumper as they uh, changed up some numbers on me here. So Jumper, starting center, and you saw him bounce back up, so he should return shortly, you would think. Get him some Gatorade, some uh, those little Gatorade packets. Second down and four, coming up on five to play fourth quarter. So every snap becoming critical as to how this one's going to end up. Win. Able to get the first down. Yeah. Now you got to start calling your timeouts if you're A&T. And if you're Furman, keep doing the same thing, finishing the drive, finishing the game. And that's where Coach, Coach Hendricks has to count on his offensive linemen to be able to take over. You know, look at those double teams, manning the line of scrimmage, working your way up to the, the linebacker level, sealing those guys off. And when you have talented backs such as uh, Furman, 
they will make you right. But you have to do your job as an offensive lineman um, to really create those opportunities for your backfield. And a good start to a senior season for Devin Wynn. 15 carries, 65 yards on the receiving end. He's been vital in the passing game. Four receptions for 47, including a touchdown catch. First TD of the fall season for the Furman offense. Somebody jumped. Let's find out who. Everyone's always pointing at each other, right? He did it, man. No, he did it. No, he went. He jumped first. Officials have been busy in this one. Very much. Make sure they're hydrated. So it'll move it five yards in the Paladins' favor. 19 combined penalties. That's the 10th on North Carolina A&T. And again, that clock keeps moving. And you got to protect the ball if you're firm in here, right? You know, you don't, <laughs> you can't turn the ball over with the interception. You can't turn the ball over with the botch mesh. You know, you, you've got to be sure to protect the football, do all the little things right to finish this game off. Win. Oh, boy, we've really seen a burst of speed and, quite frankly, some running room for him over these past few carries that we hadn't in the first three and a half quarters. Yeah, and again, I think that's that a and defense. They've been doing such a great job. And again, they haven't played against anyone in over two years. They've, you know, it's a really hot day. Being uh, in this environment and having a lot asked of you here late in the fourth quarter, you might start seeing some of that give away. And that's why you're starting to see this Furman offensive line getting, getting making bigger and bigger holes. Uh, you see the backfield being able to hit the hole a little bit harder and getting more production out of their run game right now. So this a t defense, they've done a fantastic job. you got to take your hats off to them. Um, but it looks like maybe that, uh, that wear and tear is catching up here late in the fourth. Alden's clearly taking their time, working that play clock way down. Coming up on three and a half to go fourth quarter, as you see. Aggies still have all three of their timeouts. Win, and that time caught and slung to the ground. Yes, that's the one thing I used to hate, Pete, being offensive lineman, and you're trying to milk the clock. You have to get in your stance and just hold it. I'm like, can we just stand in the huddle and then run out? <laughs> Henry Daniel, by the way, nice job for the defensive lineman. Freshman out of Creedmont, North Carolina, having a good day. And Aggies will go ahead and call the timeout with Furman looking at a second and 11. I totally agree with you. Now, you can understand these days if you don't really huddle up and you pretty much are oh going for it. And we've seen Furman go fast today and not use the huddle for the most part. I mean, can we stand? I mean, I think the clock is, what, 25 seconds. We, you know, we know we're going to use most of the clock. Let's just stand in the huddle to at least, at least, you know, 15, 13 seconds, trot to the line of scrimmage. That's going to take seven seconds for some of the big boys. And so then you get down in your stance and you snap the ball with two or three seconds left. Boom. You know, why, why make the big boys have to hold their stance for a whole 20 seconds? That's torture, man. That's torture. No wonder the guys are cramping up. Paladins during this fourth quarter. Most importantly, that third number you see over on the right. They've held the ball for over eight minutes. How can they finish the drive off? Protect the football, do all the little things right. Sisson dumping to win. Got behind the defender. He'll be thrown down. Good catch up speed by Stucky, the linebacker. And it'll be third down and short. A&T with a quick turnaround. Friday, they head east and go play in Durham against Duke. Furman getting ready next Saturday to head up to Cookville, Tennessee, take on Tennessee Tech. Really high percentage play in this situation. Yeah, very much so. And again, protecting the football, understanding the situation, staying in bounds, keeping the clock rolling. Great job uh, right there by the, the veteran Devin Wynn. George Quarles, the offensive coordinator at Furman. Really good call. What a great job he does. Here's Wynn trying to get the first down. See him reaching the ball out. I think they might spot him about a yard shy. And a second timeout will be used by A&T with a fourth and short upcoming and 2.29 remaining here in our final quarter of regulation. Devin Wynn of the Paladins trying to seal the deal here in the opener. 
He's carried for 74 yards so far. 26 to 18, under two and a half to go. Today, you have to deal with a lot of moving parts. You want everything to be on autopilot. We got a huge increase in orders, but it's not And to be prepared if anything changes. I'll be right in. With IBM, you can do both. Your business can bring data together across your clouds, from suppliers to shippers to the factory floor. So whatever comes your way, the wheels keep moving, seamlessly modernizing your operations. That's why so many businesses work with IBM. Nice work, everyone. It's not the truck you drive, or the uniform you wear, the people you inspire, or the sacrifices you make. The greatest part of being a hero is the impact you have every single day. We thank you. Timmy Bleak Road, two for three today. Big field goal right here, Pete. It's a little bit beyond an extra point attempt, trying to make this an 11 point lead. And Bleak Road, 26 yarder, an important conversion. And he extends the lead to 29 to 18. Paladin settled for three, happy they did. They lead late on our Ingalls SOCON Game of the Week. Today, you want data to be secured, and your customers want things to be seamless. With IBM, you can do both. AI helps you monitor threats across clouds, address regulations, and create all new experiences. The fresh hotness is back in Pizza Hut, baby. Detroit-style pizza, with the cheese all the way to the crispy edges. Layered with 80, no they didn't, 80 pepperonis and a savory sauce poured right on top. Go ahead, get yourself some Detroit style. I think I'll send Detroit a thank you card. Dear Detroit, thank you. The Detroit style pizza. Create your own or pick from three signature recipes. No one out pizzas the hut. Ham Sisson a career day for the Paladins. 25 of 40, 362 yards, three touchdowns. He matches an effort he had in the spring in that category against Sanford, but the 362 yards blowing away his previous career high of 277. And Sisson and the Paladins now just two minutes, 27 seconds away from wrapping up an opening win. A little pooch kick. Left prep row. Going the wrong way, big fella. Oh. a and hoping, <laughs> trying anything. Some creativity shown by Michael Salahuddin that time, but ended up getting negative yards when it all turns out. So Jalen Fowler and a and they trailed 16 to three and then 26 to 10, but got back in this game a couple of times, looking up at a two possession game, just one timeout remaining for a and They did score on a quick 74 yard strike from Fowler to Ron Hunt. I think it's safe to say, I mean, it's, it's never over till it's over, but um, there were definitely a lot of good things that a and has done today uh, that they should be, feel really good about. And Fowler trying to do more, oh. and Sterling Burkhalter, a freshman out of Cincinnati, showing that he is going to turn into another reliable target for the Aggies. And again, it's, it's not over yet, but, uh, you know, they can strike downfield when they want to, when everyone's on the same page. So that's what you have to try to find plays and find uh, that kind of momentum and different strategies that are going to allow you to put points on the board. 40 yards. Fowler, first career start now, 12 of 25 for 250, couple of touchdowns. He's also led them in rushing, 10 carries, 34. Pressure coming, gets rid of it. And coming back to make the grab is Hunt. And that's for another first down. They've got some guys who can post up in the receiving game. Hunt, who just caught the ball, is 6-3. Burkhalter, 6-5. Player not available today, Zach Leslie stands 6-4, so kind of look like they may be the Aggies basketball team coming off the bus Yeah, with the size they have. And they're athletic, and again. Well, and they've got a quarterback who stands 6-4, so yeah. I mean, he, can, he can see the field as well. They've got the guys. It's just, I think, 
being off for since 2019, you know, you kind of see the, 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 they're not all on the same page quite yet. Banks um, getting out of bounds as pressure came from Gilby. But I, I think throughout the season as they transition to this new conference, uh, I think they're going to be a, a threat. And I think, you know, any team that plays against any team that sees this film, they're going to recognize that there's a lot of talent on this a and team. And once they kind of get in the rhythm, they're really hard to slow down and stop. On the flip side, I think Furman's done a great job showcasing one. They put up 29, almost 30 points, and they still turned the ball over twice. You clean up those turnovers. You clean up those, uh, you know, those penalties, things like that. And this Fowler a, goes down. This is a really good football team that this Furman Paladin program has. Guy who's done that quite a bit in his career, Adrian Hope. So it brings up third down and nine. Clock continues to wind. 1.15 to go in the fourth quarter. Fowler. Near oh, the who, end zone. Who caught and it? And let's see. Caught or was it reeled in or not or knocked away? It looked like it was. It said incomplete. Look. Yeah, it was pulled in by Burkhalter, but he was out of bounds. Like two guys on the same team in the same area. Again, that's just not on the same page. Tamon Cook was also there. Hugh Ryan doing a nice job a nice for throw. the Paladins covering. Great throw again. Oh, yeah, he was out of bounds. And Yates was right there as well. So fourth down, pretty much the game right here with 108 to play. It's a ball game, folks. Fowler. Threw it one way, Burkhalter went the other, and that's going to do it. A&T will give it up on downs, and the Furman Paladins. They may have started feeling comfortable with a 16-point advantage. A&T hung in there, but the Paladins look like they're going to get away with this victory of 11 points. A couple of kneel downs needed, and Furman will be able to salt away win number one in 2021. So this is the first of our Ingalls SoCon Game of the Week doubleheader following at the top of the hour on many of these same stations, Western Carolina and Eastern Kentucky as they kick off the curve. Today, business is a balancing act. You want your data to be protected and secured. And your customers want seamless and easy. With IBM, you can do both. Your company can monitor threats across your clouds, address all those regulations, and still create all new experiences. Trustworthy AI-powered security. That's why so many businesses work with IBM. Truthfully, it's frustrating to see how fast dust reappears. But dusting with a cloth is a pain. And dealing with a bulky vacuum is such a hassle. Ugh. Ugh. So now we use our Swiffer Sweeper. And dusters. The fluffy fibers, they pick up dust easily. Grabbing it in all those hard to reach places. Gotcha. Ooh. And for our floors, Sweeper's textured cloths lock all kinds of dirt, dust, and pet hair. Unlike my vacuum, it sneaks under and around places. Look at that. Dust free and hassle free. Stop cleaning, start Swiffering in Greensboro. 29-18 is our score. Furman gets the victory. Stay tuned. Coming up shortly, it's Western Carolina and Eastern Kentucky, the second half of our Ingalls SOCON Game of the Week season opening doubleheader. On behalf of Jared Singleton and our fine crew here at Paladin Stadium, Pete Gannity saying so long. Next Saturday, 2 p.m., we'll see you from Charleston with the Citadel and Charleston Southern.